Well, Friday night is tight night here at the Modus Super Series. Uh, this incredible Group B is going to take uh, some sorting out as the finals night uh, reaches it, the, the places at finals night reach their dramatic conclusion. Matthew Edgar, it's going to be some ride, this, isn't it? Well, I'm a big fan of roller coasters, so this is the type of night I want. I mean, if we look at the table and what happened yesterday, David Cameron, perfect example of a roller coaster, went from the very bottom and rose up to the top all within one game, which means if he can rise with that within one game, surely he can drop to the very bottom within one game, and he's got a tricky opener. Yeah, tungsten tension guaranteed. It was less dramatic this afternoon, as Henry Deacon describes. David, what an incredible night it was last night. Going into your final game, you were bottom of the group. You won it and went top of the group. Just reflect upon that evening for us. Uh, as I say, it's a funny game when we play it sometimes. And I say, I come out, uh, I come out. Consistency was an issue for Diogo Portela. He used his Super Series as match practice ahead of the Alexandra Palace. But for him, it was a bottom place in Group C. Meanwhile, for the talented American Danny Lauby, play kind of went in fits and sparks. Consistency was something that he was looking to work upon. Davidson Adam Lipscomb can leave with its head held high. A positive opening performance and a 170 finish, the crowning glory on debut. Iron Conterman, again, another player where consistency was something he was looking to find, but he gave us moments of brilliance like that 114. Graham Usher came back from the woes of Group A to qualify for tomorrow night's final with magic moments like that 1-5-1. But the glory was Gary Stones. He is now the bookmaker's favourite to win finals night tomorrow evening by topping Group C. Well, apologies if you caught a little bit of David Cameron at the start of that. We will bring you that interview in due course but uh, Matthew mentioned that it wasn't quite as dramatic this afternoon we'll take a look at that group C table and you called it quite early that it would be Usher and Stone that got through you were right again just want to say you know I've got to chuck it in there but yeah there was the two standout performers all the way through and rightly so the two players that got through eight wins out of ten good on the legs column as well a couple of good performances though throughout the day we saw Diogo Portella sort of grow into it, despite the fact he sort of regressed in the table. Adam Lipscomb, very good on debut for him and Conterman. We just saw him develop and grow before our eyes, but it was the two class acts of that group, the top two, Gary Stone and Graham Usher, who go through to Saturday. And Gary Stone's actually now gone favourite for the week. And that's off the back of the level of performance he's been showing over that Group C. Yeah, interesting, because we saw Jan van Veen win Group A, and he was pretty impressive over a couple of days there as well. But let's focus on tonight. Look, we've been building it up as one of these most dramatic evenings we've ever had, and it should be. If we take a look at the, the Group B table, this is remarkable, isn't it? Well, words won't do it justice, really. You can see the story before your eyes. Just look down that points column. That is not a mistake. All the players literally tied on four points, hardly anything splitting them between the legs. It's all to play for tonight. It's as if yesterday barely happened. Yeah, well, the first match is David Cameron against Paul Hogan. Now, they are the top two in the table there, but that's going to change a lot over the course of this evening. When the pair met yesterday, Cameron did win the game, finishing it off with this 116 checkout. Uh, Matt, come on then, it's time to uh, get your latest predictions. Give us at least one name you think will make it. I'm going to go with Josh Payne, and I'm going to go with him because as we look through his week, he's given us really big numbers in one half of the game. Yesterday, finishing at 58%, it's more than one in two. That is an incredible turnaround, but he averaged 84 where earlier on in the week we've seen him average 90 with uh, another low double in percent. Then we've seen him average quite big, and he's just playing in bits. If he can put it all together, he's going to run away with this. Yeah, he's in action in the second game, but the first one, as I mentioned, features Canada's David Cameron, the uh, Seniors Masters champion, and Henry D. can caught with him before the evening's action gets underway. David, what an incredible night it was last night. Going into your final game, you were bottom of the group. You won it 
and went top of the group. Just reflect upon that evening for us. Uh, as I say, it's a funny game when we play it sometimes. And I say I come out, uh, I come out of the gate strong the first couple of days, but then I just kind of fell back a little bit. I, I couldn't really focus the last couple of days, but but I mean I found enough to, to you know to to keep it close, which is what I want to do. So. So every player is now on four points overnight. For you, do you look at this now just as a one-day group, almost like with a clean slate? Well, you have to, you know what I mean? So we're here again tonight. We're all in the same number. So, yeah, it just, it's just uh, go up on the stage and see what happens, right, and see where we end up. Of course, the victory is so important, but how important could legs difference as well as the wins be this evening? I mean, as long as you get through, I think, is the big thing, right? Because every time you get to come back and play again, it's a new day and anything can happen, so... We look forward to watching you play. David, good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Right then, let's get this ridiculous race underway. It's a tie at the top, but also a battle at the bottom. Such is the situation in this gripping group. Describing the darting drama tonight alongside Matthew Edgar is Henry Deacon. Chris, a very good evening and good evening, everyone. And if I can give you one little bit of advice tonight, don't go away from your screen because all five players find themselves on four points. Little by little, we'll whittle them down to just three. Well, it was Gary Stone who took the morning glory, but first up tonight, David Cameron, who's travelled half the world away from Canada, takes on Paul Hogan in our opening match of the night. And Matthew Edgar alongside me to commentate on all 15 matches this evening, some might say we have some drama David, ahead. David's Our referee first. tonight is Game on. Owen Binks. So get yourself in from the cold. He's going to referee in all of the play this evening. Matthew Edgar, very good evening to you. And I've got to say, I've never known a night 34. as tight and tense as this. I have never seen, watched, played, commentated in anything we have 100. seen yesterday where all the players on four points, I put this out on the social media earlier on, and I had to put the warning that it is not an error with the graphic. All four players are genuinely tied on four points. Chris Murphy said it's going to be a ride. It's going to be like a roller coaster. I did mention upstairs that Cameron was able to swoop the field with that victory yesterday which by the same logic means he could tumble through the field just as fast there are three places available in this group so you don't have to win it to qualify through to saturday night's final the top three will go through 100. obviously the higher you finish the more privileges you'll get tomorrow night three players confirmed and three more will be confirmed by the end of play 100 and sometimes you have half a guess of what's going to happen, but you really don't this evening. Well, you cannot separate the two from the open line. This has only ever happened once before in the history three, of the three, Live League slash Super Series. It happened in Phase 3. It was Week 4, and it involved Mike Warburton, Jared Cole, Peter Jakes, Nathan Gervin, and Scott Baker. All Nine, ended Night 5. 1 with two wins apiece. That was in May this year. We have been treated to a 170 already this week. It wasn't by Cameron. 136. He's one away from we adding himself to the list. Paul Hogan took out this 106 yesterday. That was for the match against Josh Payne when he won 4-0. 70. It was kind of a feature of David, Paul Hogan's game 34. yesterday, wasn't it? The 100-plus finishers. Game show on the first leg. And David the Cameron. least used double on the board is again used and again hit. They don't throw at it very often, but when they do, it is a successful Second hit for the players. First. Game on. I'm going to rename it. I'm going to call it Haley's Comet. It's used so infrequently. Is there anything that's hit 24. very frequently that you can think of? Because double 17, I bet has got the best percentage on it because everyone seems to hit it. This is where we scour through our power packs. Well, Josh Payne has hit every single attempt he's had at double 17, or admittedly there's only been one. Paul Hogan's actually 50% on that double. One from two, and nobody else in this group has 100. actually had a go at the Haley's Comet double. I've got Andy Jenkins down for one in one. Graham Mushroom we saw go through earlier on. 
100. Has done 4 out of 7. That's 57%. Yeah, I might copyright the Haley's Comet double 85. one. And of course, when you get in contact as well at home, we're going to have some fun as well as bring you some dramatic arrows. We're going to have our Tuxton teaser. We also want you to get involved in the coverage via at MSN Dart on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We're looking forward to hearing from you this evening whilst we bring you some top action between five players who literally cannot be split. But in this opening game of the night, it's David Cameron who... Looks as if he was wrestling the darts away from Crocodile Dundee. One hundred and forty, but we record one hundred and fifty-two. He may have wrestled the darts away from Paul Hoker because he leaves sixty-four after twelve. Hoker unable to fire in the one-five-two, but what he is going to do is going to leave it very handy indeed. He requires sixty-four. Pick your pick. Choose as tops. 24. Just a little bit over we the top for Hogan 36. to level this up. And when you look at the Games patterns of on play, the second leg. is there Paul Hogan. potential for Paul Hogan to reach over to the panic button? Because his best starts came in his first two games yesterday. He beat James Go Richardson 4-2 and then first. Josh Payne 4-0, but then lost his last two games. If he opens up with a defeat here, with this tight group, 45. Who knows? He could end up going down towards the bottom end of the table from the top. Or he could just completely reverse the fixtures from last night because that's how these fixtures are determined. 85. This was the last game of yesterday. This is the first game of today and vice versa with the rest of the fixtures this evening. You said it's really hard to split this group tonight and I agree, but let's say, for example, someone asked you 43. to split this group and decide who's going to go through. What would your answer be if that was a question that arose? Have you just indirectly asked One me to predict hundred. who goes through? Oh, if you'd like to predict who goes <laughs> through, feel free. I've just bought myself a massive fence for Christmas, and I think I'm going to go and sit on it now. 59. Well, we know Edgar's predictions aren't the same. Edgar likes to... Get off the fence and give you some predictions. I gave you one name upstairs, Josh Payne. 41. I'm also going to go with James Richardson, who starts at the bottom of the group today. And I'm going to go with the winner of this match. One hundred and eighty. I'm not going to tell you who that's going to be. I'll let that work itself out. But whoever wins this game, I think, will be the third player through. 60. I think that's a cop-out. Well, I have gave you a two. Two and a half. Two and a half. So basically what you're saying in terms of predictions, don't be sad. Two out of three ain't bad. We're getting a song theme tonight, aren't we? Very musical, isn't it? I wonder if we're going to see an oasis of excellence from our players tonight as Cameron leaves tops tops after 15. No score. Paul, you require 78. He's knocking at the door of Paul Hogan. He was facing a dart to go 2 0 down not long ago. 38. He's now throwing a dart to go 2 1 up. That's just 40. darts and how it seesaws and the pendulum swings from side to side so quickly. How one handful of darts, one Game visit to the, the board, can literally David change Cameron. the fate in this short format. We mentioned it this morning in Group C, where one moment can swing well, and turn Porto these first. best Game of seven-leg encounters. When it's first to four, minute moments get capitalised much more quickly. One hundred. There is no time to recover there is no later you don't need to do it tomorrow you need to do it now 59 there's no time for darts procrastination especially in this group 
That's safe for exams, isn't it? 140. One hundred. Well, yesterday, David Cameron needed to take a little time to wake up into proceedings. He lost his first two matches of the night. But then he came back 100. to win his final two. And he went, well, he started from the bottom and went to the top, didn't he? In that final match, which was absolutely remarkable. Going along with the music theme that you are producing we tonight, I'd like to say he started from the bottom, now he's here. Is that 50 cent? 95. Do you know what? I don't actually fully know. One thing I do know, which is a really, really interesting stat for you, is yesterday there were 17 180s in the day. 66. Of which David Cameron hit seven. That is nearly half of the group's 180s to one man. 30. He's going to need one of those. He's going to have a realistic chance of applying any pressure here to Paul Hogan, who's left Cameron way back. He has had one already 140. today. 140. So 8 we require 36. 18 180s that have been hit in Group B. And it's double 18 for Paul Hogan. Game for a level the game. Black. Paul Hogan. A game that quite hard to split them. It was hard to split them beforehand. We've seen four legs, and we still can't split them. But both Legates, have David little mini opportunities. Birds. But in general, you'd say 2-2 two, two is a fair scoreline. Desmond for the first time tonight in the first match of the 60. night. And you know how much I like these little quirky stats, Matt. Well, that maximum by David Cam was the 180th 180 of the week. 79. And 10 maximums would see us reach 1,300 for Series 2. You'd expect to get those 10 maximums across the night. We've got nine more games coming your way, including the conclusion of this one. So that number I strongly expect will be broken. 140. Paul Hogan will be hoping to throw. He's 100. broken in this one. He's making his move. And this is the time to make it. This is the time to get that breaker throw. Because it just gives you that cushion, that little buffer. 41. That you get from breaking it now rather than trying to chase it down in leg seven. Forty-one. So Cameron with a throw leads himself a 160 after 12. Hogan with a two treble visit could have put himself in a nice position in the leg. Tuck leads himself on a finish. But it's Cameron first to the hockey wanting this 160 to go three to up and a leg away from victory. Hogan now can do exactly the same but that would be against the dance which would mean we he'd have the throw in the subsequent leg to go on until victory. Still on if he decides to go triple 15 because when he got his nine data at the British Internationals back in 2017, he went triple 15, double 18. It was the first ever nine data in that tournament, which is incredible when you think of the Game history the of that leg. event. David Cameron. David Cameron pins that top to a 17 dart leg, 3-2. See if he gets pulled to throw first. One hundred and eighty. I was just thinking, if David Cameron actually gets through this group and Josh Payne, Josh Payne, someone I really do expect to come through this. One hundred and forty. We'd have five out of the six players that started Group A through to finals night. One hundred. And last week in this group. The two players that dropped into it from Group A ended up being eliminated. 
Well, that goes to show that no two weeks are the same here at the Super Series. And we said those 180s will get chalked off tonight and we'll hit that next milestone of 180s. 105. And we've already seen two 180s since that statement was made. He only was looking for 10, so eight to go. He's still got nine games plus the conclusion of this. Six. One of my tips of the night comes up in the next match, but Hogan here to save the match. Once it's 116, trouble 20 for double 18 now is the option. Two 18s for level game Games for free free. And he is so oh, efficient Hogan. on that target, isn't he? You associate certain doubles with certain players and when they need it in Seven the fire, they come up with the goods. Paul Hogan Game on double 18 is most certainly one of them. And because he could find it at that crucial juncture he finds himself going to a deciding leg against 40. david cameron in our first game of the night maybe it's the theme of things to come i did say that no two weeks are the same in the super series but are two weeks want... going to be the same david cameron kicked off the campaign yesterday he played james richardson in our opening game and he lost that game 4-3 Lost that obviously in the decider, and he did miss a match dart. 177. Will history repeat itself, or will David Cameron be the first player to six points? Cameron has had darts to win every single match he's been involved in in this group. In the first two matches yesterday, he couldn't take advantage. Two wins in his final two matches means. He's the table oh, topper, and that match one there may mean he could find himself two points clear at the top one in the first game of the night. That's his third max of the match, and what a time to come up with it. And he's going to get six 60. from 104. David, you require 104. To see a third straight win. He's going to get a dart. A double top. 64. Well, he's going to get more darts. He had one dart yesterday. He missed that for the match at 4-3 against James Richardson. But James Richardson was there to pounce. Paul Hogan cannot pounce on 260. David, you require so David 40. Cameron comes back to the board. He's only thrown 12 darts in this leg. This is a polished last leg from David Cameron. Game who gets shot out over the line and is the first David player Cameron. of this group through to six points. And this tight group continues to be so as the leg difference doesn't really offer too much in the favour there of David Cameron. So no damage really done in that column for Paul Hogan. The damage does reflect in the points. And the damage is coming in those 180s. Another three 180s there for David Cameron moves him on to 10 for this group so far. There have only been 21. So nearly half of the 180s in this group go in the way of David Cameron. We'll see if that can be changed in our next game when James Richardson takes on the maximum, ironically named Josh Payne.
Welcome back. Well, David Cameron has drawn first blood on this Friday night. It is going to be a close fight, as we've been saying. A 4-3 win for him in a really high-quality affair, actually, against Paul Hogan. Both players averaging just shy of 93 in that one. But Cameron, for the second day on the spin, getting the right result against Hogan. And it is now three straight wins for David Cameron, but three straight defeats for his opponent. Uh, we will take a look at the table. It's going to change so much over the course of the next couple of hours but Cameron is on top Hogan only losing by one leg actually still sits in second place but as you can see all of the other players tied on four points Cameron on six at the moment and a reminder it is the top three that qualify from this group at the end of the evening's action uh, the next two players in action are Josh Payne and James Richardson and when this pair met yesterday, well, it was a whitewash for Josh, taking out this 84 on double 11 to seal the 4-0 win over James Richardson, a man, of course, famous for hitting two nine darters at the Super Series, including one against his own son, who's also called Josh. So Cameron has been the first to make a move tonight. Who will be the first to respond? Will it be Richardson? or pain. Let's find out in the company of Matthew and Henry. Thank you very much, Chris. So Richardson and Payne get their campaigns underway in the second match of the evening session. Two of the power scorers in this group going toe to toe. But yesterday it was a case perhaps of the opposite for Josh Payne, who was happy with certain elements on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday with the scoring, but actually flipped the other way on Thursday. Up against him, Ruthless, James Richardson from Rushton. His son Josh competed here last week. And now James back to try and make it yeah, tilt like James to throw finals players. night. These two Game real off. prolific power scorers. So expect to see some maximums fired in in this one, which is a nice little segue to my uh, to one of my selections this evening with the Sporty Stuff TV gang. Over two and a half, one eighties at five to six is one of my tips because if these two get at it, we could see some fireworks. We could see that treble getting a bit of a pounding. One hundred. See what I mean? There's one. You need over two and a half. That one hundred and forty. That one's quite a good one. If you'd have had it in the first game, that would have came in as well. Four maximums in that one. You mentioned that Josh sixty. The difference between his scoring and his finishing, and I touched up on this on the balcony earlier with Chris Murphy, and I was saying how we've seen two versions of Josh Payne, but we've never seen the complete package. Yesterday, 58.82%. That's one of the best 60. finishing stats for a day I have ever seen. But yeah, he averaged 84 and a half. And that just shows that he wasn't finding that power consistency, especially when his best leg of the day was a 12 data. He had a 144 out. James, you've got 158. Everything was there except, I would say, this power scoring that he's showing us in this one. Despite James Richardson's 180, Josh is first down to a finish. Josh, you require 44. The Alcapulco shot, four tops. Twenty-four. James That's another two darts 100. missed at double for Josh Payne. So Richardson. Ton for the opening leg. This is with the darts for Ruthless. And so Payne's going to get another opportunity at the outer ring. He didn't sniff many of these up yesterday. But he's edging closer here. Game and finds its way in. Josh Payne. And I was having a chat with Josh in the practice room before play got underway this evening. And... Second is Josh. He said first. on Wednesday, he was really, uh, uh, on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, he was really happy with the scoring phase of his game. And the one thing he just needed to clear up on was the doubles. 177. And that yesterday was a, perhaps a bit of an opposite where scoring wasn't quite there in the 
power range that we know that he's capable of, but when it came 62. to the finishing element, it was on point. Well, by contrast, I've mentioned already the 58.82% that Josh Payne had on his doubles yesterday oh, in the outer serious? ring. James Richardson was 29%. That is half. So he's using double the amount of darts at the outer ring that Josh Payne is, but yet he averaged One higher hundred. for the day than Josh Payne did, which just is further indication of the complete lack of scoring ability that Josh shown yesterday in that front nine. 41. That is not a problem today. He powered his way to 44 in the last leg in 12 darts. 47. And it looks like he's going to leave himself a nice little two-darter again here. Again after 12. That is hard to keep pace with. 57. And at the minute, Josh Payne's scoring is the reason why he's in this position. As far as Richardson's concerned, he's going to have to find that higher power when it comes to that stage of a leg. It's interesting you said as far as Richardson is concerned. Because if this continues, with no, Josh Payne having four. this much freedom in this game, concerned is going to be the word for James Richardson. Because in this group, where we started the day with all five players on four points, you One cannot hundred. afford to start Josh with a heavy defeat 36. because legs are so important. Game show on the second leg, Josh Payne. But he is just doing what he needs to do. I just wonder, he did have a, a bit of a step back. Was he potentially contemplating a James to throw first. split, or was that Game just on. a readjustment over to double nine? No, I absolutely think that was a possible split. He looked at the 16. scoreboard to see what James was on. The first start was thrown a bit safe. I think when you look at the distance that it's come away from the... Double. 80. And I think that was just a, throw a safe dart over there. If it goes in, it goes in. If not, I'll attack it with a second. So it gives him like one and a half goes at the double. 96. Are you ready for your favourite part of the night? You're leaving. <laughs> 130. I will be after this session, but, you know, you could have saved that till game 10. Right, so, 66. it is tungsten teaser time on Friday night. Well, hey, here we go. So, on this day in 2007, the PDC German Championship took place and two players hit nine darters. Who were they? At MSS Dart, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram for our Tungsten teaser. I actually know the answer to this one as well. 42. One hundred and twenty-five. Judge Rock 140. So 140 for Josh Payne for a 3-0 lead. Another one of them. Left him a dart at Double 10. So Richardson returned to 54. He hasn't actually had a dart at a double James yet in this game. 54. Barring a whole host of dramas. That's going to change right here, right now. Tops. 14. Two well thrown darts. Josh require 14. The pitch just above the wire. And so Payne returns for the target. James Richardson's Thirdly. just missed. Josh but there is no mistake from the maximum who races him to a 3 0 lead. Obtains the double breaker throw. And now has the dart well, to complete to a whitewash victory in the second game of the evening. Just go back 57. to what you said, that word you said a few minutes ago, concerned. That was the look on James Richardson's face a second ago, a concerned 48. look. Because Josh Payne holds his throw which the way he's been playing 
is the most likely outcome. 100. James Richardson will take a minus four on the legs column, and they will come into play. It's undoubtable that legs are going to become a factor tonight. Now, we should give you the tie-break hey, system that is in place here at the Super Series. So, obviously, points is the first metric, but if they're all level, legs difference, legs one overall, head-to-head -head wins, legs one in head-to-heads, an overall average for player in the group. There is no nine dart shootout in this particular 60. scenario. Although that would have been interesting if we had a five way nine dart shootout. Could you imagine the chaos? I'd love to see it. 139. I'd like to see. <laughs> I'd like to see uh, how Owen Binks would deal with bringing five players <laughs> onto the hockey. That would have hey, been an easy task. Won. Joshua requires 70. For the match, for 4 0 win, and to send a statement of intent out to the rest of the, rest of the group. 30. Bent the wire. Well thrown dart, but look at the score of James Richardson. He is all the way back on 2 2 7. So Josh Payne will return. James Richardson ain't really putting much 40. of a dent in this one. Joshua requires 40. Game shot and the Josh Payne seals a 4 0 win against James Richardson. It is the perfect start for Payne to his Friday campaign here at the Super Series. For James Richardson, it'll be a case of going again in his next match against Andy Jenkins, who we're going to see up next. He's the last player we have yet to have watched in this group so far. He takes on Paul Hogan next.
Welcome back. Right then, it's a couple of repeat results from yesterday in the first two matches as David Cameron edged past Paul Hogan and then Josh Payne made the perfect start in the match you just saw before the break. A second successive whitewash win, in fact, against James Richardson. 4-0 to Payne, only allowing uh, the Rushton man two darts at double in the entire match. And these heavy defeats could come back to cost James Richardson when all is said and done in this group. Uh, we'll take a look at that Group B table and you will see that we do now have a couple of players who have made it to six points, Cameron and Payne, with their wins this evening. Paul Hogan and Andy Jenkins will play next and one of them will join them on six. James Richardson, though, now with uh, a difficult leg different to, to get back, minus six. It could come down to that for at least one of the places in the top three tonight. So, as I said, Paul Hogan getting ready for his second outing of the evening. Played well in his first, but was just beaten in a last leg decider against David Cameron. Uh, he got there by taking out this 116 checkout on that trusty double 18 of his. Uh, but Andy Jenkins won the meeting when the pair met yesterday. It was a 4-2 win for Rocky in that one, cleaning up 83 on double 16. Right then, we've had a look at the table. Whatever happens here, we'll see a three-way tie at the top. It is going to be close all evening, so let's carry on the Friday fun and thrills with our dynamic duo of Matthew Edgar and Henry Deacon. Thank you very much indeed, Chris. So, Paul Hogan up against Andy Jenkins is our third match of the evening. Hogan, who we saw in the first match of the evening, Andy Jenkins making... His arrival on Friday night at the Super Series. And Hogan in that first game. Missing out narrowly by David Cameron by four legs to three. That was kind of the story of David Cameron's night yesterday. The game's going all the way to the decider. But you mentioned in comms in that first game, Matt, that if Paul Hogan lost that game, he's now in a run of three in a row in the L column. At what point does that become infectious? I think if he loses this one, he's going to start reaching for the panic button because after two games, he'd have felt like he was in with a strong shout. After six games, he'll still be in the same position he was after two games, which you want to be at least dribbling those points in. You don't want them to come okay, in clusters. Like to throw first. Game on! This was a game yesterday that Paul Hogan didn't perform in. This was his worst performance of the day, an 84.06 average against Andy Jenkins, who beat him 4 2. 100. So he'll be hoping to turn that around. I'm sure there's plenty of history between these two, not too far apart on the 100. geography map. So, probably played an awful lot of local events and competitions around the area together. Well, he battled out many a finals over the years. And it just makes you wonder what the deep rooting of that will be. Does that... 140. Has maybe Andy Jenkins got a very good record against Paul Hogan that we wouldn't know from these local events, which just has that little bit of lag, which might be why 83. we saw Paul Hogan's worst performance in this game yesterday. There's one thing that is certainly visible is the action 19. of Andy Jenkins looks so much better tonight. A lot less floaty, a lot more deliberate. And I won't be surprised to see his level raised from yesterday, which was extremely disappointed by the standards we've seen from Andy Jenkins. Averaging 79.61 across the day with a daily average best of 83.80, which came in this fixture yesterday against Paul Hogan. 105. Paul, you require 38. And Hogan has left 38 after 12. He splits for double 16 to take the opening leg with the darts. Six. So it doesn't go. And he Jenkins back on 137 to obtain the break. We'll head upstairs for tops, tops with 80 Nine, remaining. Following that seven. triple 19 for Will starters. So Hogan with dart 16 looks for double 16. On the first and leg. one nil Ooh, up. Hogan. He is where we... Speak about the battle between the pair last night with Jenkins won by four legs to two. Like they had two meetings earlier on this year 
on the World Seniors Tour. Uh, they were in qualifiers for both the Masters and match play competition. Four, and Paul one. Hogan was the victor on both occasions. Both of these fixtures actually taking place in the last 16 of those respective tournaments. Hogan getting through a last leg decider in the first. One for winning 5-1 in the second of those encounters. One hundred. And once we've got seniors on the mind. Don't forget the Circus Tavern is the place to be in February. And Dartshop.tv is the place to get your tickets. One hundred and eighty. To see some top class arrows and some of the best senior arrow smiths. Talking about top quality arrows. The blue touch paper may well have been lit in this match. Well, you mentioned one of those events that Paul Hogan won was one of the qualifiers for the Seniors World Match Play. Paul Hogan actually went and got through to the Seniors World Match Play, which took place in Hull. Went down 8-5 in the opening game, we though, to Lisa Ashton, the multiple-time Women's World Champion. Ninety-three, and he recorded one hundred and twenty. Eighty. Paul, you required twenty-eight. He said Paul Hogan had his worst performance against Andy Jenkins yesterday. At the moment, this is one of his better ones. Oh, no until score. now. He has come Andy low on the 40. double, and then he has bust on the big number. Andy Jenkins, I think, trying to work out what's just gone on. Getting closer. Twins. Oh, and he's hit the barrels. There was no gear oh, in that barrel. 20. The two literally next to each other acted more as a, a spring. For that dart, it's just clattered in and come away. Can Paul Hogan take advantage? 21. Not and he on this 20. occasion. No score. Hogan shakes his head at the back of the stage, but he's going to get another Boy, opportunity. Seven. Double two. Three. So Jenkins will get another chance. And he requires 20. Hogan looks up to the heavens. Game's on the second leg. But it's Andy, Andy Jenkins. Jenkins who has the answers in this leg. He levels up at one apiece, following a bit of a scrap on the outer ring. Third leg, it's Paul to throw first. And the man who won the leg shakes his head, knowing that he had multiple opportunities to get it done before. 100. I think this is one of the things about Andy Jenkins. He comes 59. from a, an old school mentality of winners. And we see this quite a lot, don't we? When people get on like a running habit of losing legs. 68. It almost becomes, they, they find it funny. They're, they're laughing at missing the doubles. Andy Jenkins there found nothing funny about Nine, that situation. Three. He just got more and more serious and more and more wound up by it until he delivered the product. And can, we, can, can I revise my top three? Could I put Andy Jenkins in the mix? Because from what I've seen from him tonight, the reason I didn't want to put him in the mix is not because of the level of performance yesterday. It's how he went about it. The, the throw just looked 43. all wrong. Today, there is so much more penetration and delivery within this throw that I think even though it's not happening for him now, I expect it to happen for him at some point tonight, that we're going to see the best of Andy Jenkins at some point. 60. Oh, you're going 60. That does kind of fabricate the whole art of predictions, though. Tops for Hogan Game for 2-1. 
Oh, Hogan. As he looks out, uh, uh, looks up to the heavens as to say, why is it going first time now? But surely, if you're going to predict, you predict at the start. Well, is that fair? to throw first. Well, I guess you wish you could change your predictions, don't you? Because the the four predictions Henry put forward tonight on the Sporty Stuff TV before the show started was Paul Hogan to beat David Cameron, which was wrong. He went for over two and a half 180s in the James Richardson Josh Payne game, which was wrong. So the next one you've gone 20. with is Josh Payne most 180s against David Cameron. So by the logic of Henry's predictions, go get on Cameron for the most 180s. Hey, two, one. So you don't want my lottery numbers then? No, I've lost that plenty of times already. I don't need to lose it again. <laughs> 60. The only thing I haven't lost tonight is my marbles. Yeah, you lost them last week. 84. <laughs> 55. Seventy-four. Just get this vibe with Jenkins that his level of performance is going to go up at some point soon. One hundred and forty. The main thing to do is, while it's not happening, is just stay in the game, stay competitive. Sixty-five. Easier to climb a hill 60. than a mountain. And he require 170. 92. Or oh, you require 158. We've seen some big finishes from Paul Hogan. Biggest of them 60. all was the 146, which is the 70. highest checkout we've seen so far in Group B. Game show on the fourth That's leg. Andy Jenkins. Kill there for Andy Jenkins. It took him seven darts to get it wrapped up in the fifth first leg. Eight darts first. Game to get on. it wrapped up in the opening leg. And then he wraps up that 78 finish there. The combination finishes tend to be easier when things aren't going as well for you rather than the three darts in hand. Especially when you miss a handful and you come back and you miss a handful and you 44. come back. You almost just want the leg over with. And I suppose when you're releasing the dart, you're hoping rather than expecting and 94. not really throwing them with confidence. I think that's the thing that Andy actually is throwing with tonight. You can see the... If you Nine, watched a side-by-side side shot of Andy throwing the darts yesterday compared to today, he was almost looping them yesterday. It was almost like his arm just didn't want to extend. Three. With that, you'll completely lose the release point. Seventy-six. So Hogan here, six darts on 208, and he's making a huge indent into it. One the maximum indent into it, leaving himself on double 14 after 12. You will not be wanting a 78. similar fate to the last time Four he headed to this 28. part of the dartboard. Down for double seven. Game on the fifth. Finds leg. it. Paul Hogan. And leads 3-2 against Andy Jenkins. See if it's Andy to throw first. One hundred and thirty seven. And of course, Paul Hogan would have known that if he was to lose this game, he may slide away from the players at the Six top eight. of the table. What does a win here do for him just to get that confidence again after losing so many 
in a row. I say that Jenkins could bring it back to a last leg decider. Yeah, he's got to get over that line first, which is not going to be an easy task. 80. And Andy Jenkins is going to make sure that it's not an easy task for him. We'd say that Bill Jenkins is bubbling tonight. I feel he's going to come into this at some point. Is this his move? 137, 180, 82. 102 left after nine darts. He does need something like this against the throw. 100. He will be against the throw. Yeah, and he 102. If he can wrap this up and take this all the way to a last leg shootout. It'll be the second last leg shootout of the day so far. We're only on game three. And two of those would have involved hey, Paul Hogan. Maybe he's going to be doing the David Cameron of yesterday. Gains going hey, all the way G3. to a deciding and leg. 16. So, double eight. To send us a distance. That's a whip for a while away, but on the inside wire, so of course for double Angel four, which he finds, which he pins, Jenkins. and we go all the way to a deciding leg. Hogan with the darts. Seven from final leg, it's pulled to throw first. And some start with it. One That's his third of the match, and perhaps the most timely. One when you're hundred. in this situation, one leg, you win, you win the match. You lose, you lose the match. You just want to start. You just think, just one start hundred. with a ton. Just get a treble. But to open with a max is absolutely fantastic darts there from Paul Hogan. 96. In this situation, you think 15 darts with the throw. Force your opponent to go out in 12. And he is well on course for that, if not a lot better. 105. 120. He took out a 116 tonight back in his opening game against David Cameron. He has won finishes, or won matches with big finishes so far in this group. 100. He set that up lovely. 12 darts to leave a... A single double, but Andy Jenkins is breathing down his neck because he's done exactly the same. Game show but LP knows such thing as scoreboard Paul pressure Hogan. for Paul Hogan, who following a four feet defeat to David Cameron in his opening game of the night, reverses the fortunes in a last leg decider against Andy Jenkins. That is now his first victory in four matches at the Super Series inflicting defeats on Jenks in his opening matchup of the night. We're going to take a short break. Upon our return, we're going to see Josh Payne in action as he takes on the Canadian, David Cameron.
This is the Lotus Super Series. One hundred and eighty. And if you want to watch finals night live here in Portsmouth tomorrow, you can still secure your tickets absolutely free. What's the catch, I hear you say? Well, there isn't one. Just head to dartshop.tv and book your tickets for any of the Saturday night sessions. Right then, back to Friday night. And Paul Hogan is off the mark for the evening. Uh, he defeats at Andy Jenkins 4-3, having lost his first match 4-3. He bounced back to get a first victory and a couple of points on the board. So Cameron winning 4-3 in the open, and then Josh Payne defeating James Richardson 4-0 before that 4-3 win for Hogan against Jenkins. A pair, uh, power scored really throughout the match, 3-1-80s and 5-1-40s for Hogan, but both players struggled a little bit on the doubles, but it was Crocodile Dundee who got himself over the line and he moves up the table. Uh, we'll take a look at that now. And you can see that three players have six points. So the top three will go through at the end of tonight's action. And right now, it's Cameron, Payne and Hogan occupying those positions. Andy Jenkins has a, a game in hand, as does James Richardson. They both have four. But the way the fixtures have fallen, one of the players in the next match is going to put themselves in a very, very strong position. It is Josh Payne against David Cameron, the two men occupying positions one and two right now. Uh, Payne took out this 104 finish, expertly done, the 16s route for tops in the match against David Cameron when they met yesterday, but he was 3-0 down at the time, and the Canadian went on to win the match. He actually ended an eight-match losing streak with that victory, uh, and he does lead the head-to-head -head between the pair this week by three wins to one for Payne. So uh, to move firmly into pole position in this group with victory here, it is David Cameron against Josh Payne, and it will be called by Henry Deacon and Matthew Edgar. So 3-1 on the head-to-head -head for this week to David Cameron. How much relevance does that have? We'll find out in the next 10 minutes or so. I think we've seen the best from... Josh Payne today, he had a 4-0 victory in his opening game against James Richardson, but the way he did it was probably the most complete performance we've seen so far from Josh Payne. Josh Payne, someone I said at the start of the show, they expect to see him make a move in this, and I don't feel like that head-to-head -head record is going to be too much of a hindrance for him. I think he's very good at just clearing the mind and moving on. David Cameron is not going to let him move on too easily three maximums he found in his game against Paul Hogan and also got rid of a bit of a voodoo he's got at the moment first. when it comes down to those game last on. leg deciders. He got over the line there against Paul Hogan. So both players have got plenty of positives going, which makes you think that this one is going to be a bit of a good game. And reminder as well that in this game we have one of Henry's top tips, which he actually is two from two in the L column of at the moment. He went for Josh Payne to hit the most 180s in this match. 100. Watch, there'll be no maximums. Just a terrible predictor, aren't 100. I? 100. Yes. So far. You've got a chance to redeem yourself. And this is one of those games. If I get all four ones, does that mean I don't come back tomorrow? We have uh, Chris Mason joining us tomorrow. No, It'll be myself and Chris Mason calling in the final. Henry will be leaving us to put the Christmas tree up and get ready for the festivities. One hundred and forty. A 
I'll probably forget and still turn up. 40. Although the Christmas tree is up. Thinking about it, I'm sure you'll be watching tomorrow to see the conclusion of this. As you're not going to be here tomorrow, do we get your you prediction in advance? Who might be lifting the weekly title, or do you want to wait to see how this group develops first? Gary Stone. Do you want a few minutes to think about it, or...? No, no, I'm going to stick one my neck out, and I'm going to go Gary Stone. So apologies, Gary, in advance, based on tonight's thoughts on predictions. So Cameron 161 for a break of throw. Not going to go on this particular occasion. So it means Payne's going to return for 94 Ooh, for an opening leg hold. Hasn't 94. dropped a leg so far this evening. He beat James Richardson to nil in his opening encounter in the evening. So he can extend Game the run to five the tonight. Leg. If he can pin the top, exactly what he does in the space of 17. And things are just coming quite nicely for Josh Payne at the minute, minutes, leading David Cameron by leg to nil. I, I don't know about you, Matt, but it feels like the most controlled Josh Payne has looked all week long as David Cameron nearly piled in the first max of the match. Yeah, I've mentioned it many, many times throughout the night, and I'm sure we're going to keep going back Nine, to it because it's seven. very, very relevant in the fact that Josh Payne has not gave us a complete performance throughout. He's had days where he's really good at hitting 180s, but then doesn't sandwich them together with... 57. Much and a lot of trebleless visits and just sort of cancels out those big hits. Then he's had legs where he's taking out big finishes Ooh, and then he'll miss too. six starts at a double in the next. It, we just haven't had an all-round Josh Payne yet. I do feel like tonight's the night we're going to start seeing that. We saw 100. the most rounded performance we've seen so far in that game against Josh Richardson, James Richardson, where he just completely controlled that match from start to finish. 140. I didn't know it was a six-player group. Josh Payne on the Richie Benno score. Choo, choo, choo. 100. Which is a cricket reference, in case you... I know it's lost on you, that sort of stuff. Well, I'm just thinking, you must have a pun or a reference for literally 499 of the 501 points that are possible on the scoreboard. Tops. Game show for 104 the second for David Cameron David to level up Cameron. at one apiece. Nicely done. Nicely executing. Two legs, both one with combo finishes. 94 for Payne in the first. 104 in the second. So following that that train of four, it's going to be a 1 1 4 that wins leg three, but who's going to get it? 140. Josh Payne moves his average up towards the 100 mark. 100. David Cameron goes back to what we said on Monday. Mr. Consistency is going to be. Anywhere between 88 to 92. So they are both playing One to type as Henry Deacon gets a smile on the face. He predicted Josh Payne will hit the most 180s. He is now in front on that category. And you could be about to get your first prediction of the night correct. But he doesn't want to get another one here. This is an excellent leg from Josh Payne. This is an excellent performance. 76 after nine. David Cameron is averaging 92. And has only had one chance at tops on the back of a 104 combination. 59. Josh requires 76. He has found himself on the receiving end of a Josh Payne purple patch. Which could continue here. Tots are 2-1. 36. But he is going to come back with Cameron on 2 one, seven. Eighty three. Joshua required 40. Twenty. 
just David, you require one hundred and thirty put it all together at the moment. It's one or the other. However, when you're scoring as strong as Josh Payne has, it buys Nine, you time, four. it buys you Josh opportunities. McCoy, it gives you the opportunity to miss four darts at a double like Josh already has in this one and still come back with a handful. Game shot on the third leg. Josh, Josh Payne. Payne was on for quite a leg there. He ends up in 17 darts. Most important thing, though, well, is that Owen Binks three called out game shot on the leg. Josh Payne. Doesn't matter how many darts it's in, as long Six, as you get it done. Six. Although the best leg, of course, possible is a nine. That's the subject of our Tungsten teaser. On this day in 2007, the PDC Six, German Six. Championship took place. Two players hit nine darts. If you have had some interaction on Twitter, at MSS Darts, you can treat me at H underscore D Comedia, at the Edgar 501. Uh, ben Witz has got in touch with us, saying two German end. nine darts at the German Championships. He's going to have a stab at it, and he says it's Gabby O'Clements and Max Hopp. They're incorrect answers. And I should say, it might be the German Championship, but doesn't necessarily mean the German players three. may have got those nine darters. So that's your Tungsten Teaser, 2007 PDC German Championship, which took place on this day. Two players hit nine dart finishes. Hey, Who five. were they at MSS darts? We'll also point out that Max Hopp at that point was probably about 10 years old. 26 years old at the moment. Hey, T4. So probably about 11. Saying that, though, we've seen some crazy nine darters hit, haven't we? I believe Luke Little has got one. Leighton Bennett got one, I think, at about 14 years hey, old. Hey, T3. Wasn't there a... Young Dutchman, about 11 or 9 years old, that hit a 9 darter at one point. I think I know what you're on about, Three, yeah. Four. Can't think of who and what, but I know, I, I know, where, I know what you're, where you're coming from. The name I think of is a young man called Pascal van Murek. He was about 11 years old and he hit a nine darter and it just makes you feel sick. To be fair, I hit a nine when I was 11. Single three, single three, single one three. One hundred. Maybe you should have been the tungsten teaser. What is the youngest person to ever hit a nine darter to our knowledge within competition? Maybe one for your next little stint in the competition. 120. A few weeks' time. Josh Payne then, 120 for 3 1. Treble would leave the subsequent double for the Shanghai finish. Not going to go, so Cameron returns for double 14. 60. David, you require 28. 4 2 2. Game shot on the David fourth Cameron. Leg. David Cameron. likes these games where it seems to go all the way. I'd probably, probably prefer to win them 4 0 if he could, but. Seems to always get embroiled with these battles, and that's because to throw first. just that what we said before, Game the on. level of consistency he has. He's always around the 90 mark, which in this field is always going to be competitive, but it always means that he's going to need a lot of staying power. 180! Josh Payne, second max of the match to begin leg five. Two to nil to him in that particular department. 39. If you can think of anybody who has hit some nine darters at a young age, please do tweet in. I have my Twitter 40. open in front of me here at the Edgar 501. If you can think of any young player and the age they was when they hit them, and if you know the event they hit them in as well, chuck that in. 100. There's going to be someone out there who. Knows a nice little nugget of information. 60. One hundred. 
you get the feeling that both these players have won a game. Certainly Josh Payne, who won his game 4-0 against James Richardson. 42. If he wins this game, could we say that Josh Payne is pretty much safe in the race through to Saturday, or am I going a little bit too early? 92. 10 guarantees. Eight, you can still be caught in that dramatic five-way. Ultimately, sometimes with Josh, you just feel he's just got to roll with it. And see, what happens is Cameron leaves the big fish. Another one of them would have left the bullseye. 105. Josh requires 45. Game shot on the fifth leg. Josh Payne. So roll with it. He's rolling through this one. So like it's David to throw Although, first. I've not seen a break of throw yet in this game. Everything going with it. That pattern continues. Josh Payne wins this one 4 3. 64. One thing that does look quite good at the moment is Henry Deacon's prediction. For once. 98. You have the prediction that Henry put forward. If you missed the Henry's predictions about an hour before we came live on air, this was over on Sporty Stuff TV. 36. Hogan for the highest finish against James Richardson. Do you still stand by that after what we've seen so far? I mean, Paul Hogan has registered another ton plus finish, and James Richardson's yet to record any 123. finish. 123. So by that logic, <laughs> I just thought, actually, if someone wins 4-0, then I'd win, wouldn't I? Because he wouldn't have taken, no, the other person would have taken out a finish. So even if they got double one every single leg, I'd still be the winner. If I just described a 4-0 in the most basic way possible. 140. Said there hasn't been a break of throw yet. If you're going to break the throw, this is how you do it. A couple of power scores here from Josh Payne. Power score when you get those two treble visits. 56. He's done those back to back and he's opened up a gap of 100 points plus three darts that are in his hand. 100 here would be like gold dust to Josh Payne, who has got a 60. plus four today from his victory with James Richardson. I'm going to, I feel bold enough to think that Josh will be require 80. quite confident here. If he takes this, that he will be pretty much through to Saturday. Sixty. That's a great dart, that from Josh. He comes around it, but somehow managed to just come low. The really well thrown dart from pretty much Southampton, really. He had to come right the way around 58. that one. Fifty-eight. Josh, you're the three darts so for the match. Game shot on the match. And Josh Payne Josh completes Payne. his second victory of the day. He won 4-0 against James Richardson. It's 4-2 against David Cameron. It's four points tonight for Josh Payne. He was already on four points before tonight. So he moves on to eight and he puts one foot into the finals tomorrow night. Coming up next, we've got Andy Jenkins taking on James Richardson.
So then, Josh is the boss in Group B right now. Payne has won both of his opening encounters of the night. A 4-2 success against David Cameron puts him in pole position in the group. A decent enough display, an average just shy of 87, hitting a third of his checkout attempts. Cameron was 100%, but only had two darts at double in that game. 94 the high finish for Josh and 104 for Cameron, who has picked up one win from his two matches this evening, but it is perfection from pain so far. And that means that he is now the front runner in this group, which remains close. He's on eight points, Cameron and Hogan on six, and then the bottom two on four points, but they are about to do battle. And next, Andy Jenkins and James Richardson, well, both lost their opening games of this evening. Uh, Jenks lost a great game against Paul Hogan, uh, one of the real highlights in this one the seventh leg of it 180s exchanged between the pair of them in that last leg decider but Paul Hogan held his nerve and his throw to get over the line and get his first victory of the night as for James Richardson well he was whitewashed by Josh Payne in his opening match just as he was yesterday but if he's going to repeat his results from yesterday then that's a good omen because he got a 4-1 win against Andy Jenkins when they did battle on the stage behind me last night now then the loser of this match is going to be off the pace at the halfway stage of the evening so it is a big match for the pair of them let's get back to the boys in the box to guide you through it cheers Murph the halfway stage of the Friday night action here at the Moders Super Series and well we might as well just say it for the rest of the night because it's the way the game the, the, the games are going to pan out it's another big match between Richardson and Jenkins and is it fair to say Matthew Edgar that the bookmakers are struggling to prize these apart and maybe we are undecided as to what we're going to see from this particular matchup I think we're not sure what we're going to see. I'm not sure the players know what's going to happen. I don't think either of them are feeling fully in hey, control no, of this Andy situation. To first. Game on. There's just something about Andy Jenkins tonight. I feel like he's going to come into action at some point. Is it going to be now? If it is, Fair there's before. value in this game, especially due to the fact he has the advantage of throw. Now, we did mention in the last game about Young players that have hit nine darters have actually had a message through from Chris Murphy from up on the balcony. He's let nine, me know that Z9. Bo Graves actually has a nine darter at just nine years old. A nine for the nine year old. She did it in the competition at Baldy Bridge, which is an iconic Doncaster location for darts. My hometown 60. of Doncaster. The world champion. The women's world champion, Bo Greaves, yep. Nine years old, nine data. 60. It's all panned out quite well for her, hasn't it? From playing darts quite young to a nine data to a world title. And now we're going to see her take part in James PDC Rockwell, World Championships as well in a couple of weeks' time against William O'Connor. The bullseye. 142, and he rocked 151. Downstairs, shovel 17 with the left tops. 119. James, you require 25. <laughs> 17, and he required 32. So, 32 for Andy Jenkins to win this opening leg. Game shot on the first and he sneaks leg. it into Andy the Jenkins. bottom left-hand corner. So Jenkins leads Richardson by a leg to nil. Talking about Second players who hit nine darts and young. I've Game actually on. had a text from friend of the program, Brian Raman. Hope you're doing well, my friend. Daniel Sixth Van Mornick day. was the player that you were referencing in the previous match. He was nine years of 59. age. Fifty-nine. That is incredible. Sickening, isn't it? Nine years of age. Seventy-nine. 
60. When I was nine years of age, I was trying to see how many crayons I could fit up my nose. And these guys are written nine darters. 121. Care to say what the record was? Well, you can get a couple per nostril, right, can't you? Z1. So. I won't hold, I won't hold your breath hundred. doing it again now. I'm a bit too mature for that now. I've grown up. That's very debatable. 62. You and Phil Bars were having wrestling chats earlier. I had to depart the scene. 80. Yeah, good chat about wrestling, a bit of conspiracy theories. We've been touched on to aliens. 130, 40, we best park that fort before we get shut down. Jenkins can't take out the 141. Richardson returning for the 104 to level this game back up at one apiece. Tops. Dips just underneath. So Jenkins 51, 51 for a 2 0 lead. Double 16. For Rocky, Game show the second for the break of throw, Andy to Jenkins. double his advantage and to put him halfway towards the victory post. And that Delegates now Andy really does make first. what I said at the start about this being Game potential on. value here on Andy Jenkins. That really makes it value. Now he's got that break of throw. And something that has to be noted, James Richardson has yet to win a leg of darts tonight. He lost his opening game 4-0 to Josh Payne. 100. He is 2-0 down in this one to Andy Jenkins. And Andy Jenkins has opened with the throw. 87. Quite strongly. If Andy Jenkins was to convert this, James Richardson would be 7-0. and 100. And actually, even more alarming, I've just looked back to yesterday's games and the last game of yesterday he lost 4 nil to Josh Payne. He's not won a leg since he beat Andy Jenkins. One hundred. And that was game six of yesterday. Ninety seven. So ten legs so far without a single response from James Richardson. And it might be about to go 11. 58. And you require 80. Double 10. Game show. The and Rocky's on a rampage. Andy Jenkins. James Richardson here is averaging 88. But it's James. Uh, it's Andy Jenkins who opens up a 3 0 lead. Well, look, it's James 14 the darter first. there. Game on. And Richardson with the throw. To 60. stay in this game. Of course, tomorrow night we will be announcing the field for week seven 99. of the Modus Super Series. And uh, I've had a little bit of a gander at who is involved. And we've got players from all around the world taking part in next week's 100. competition. That's a little hint to everyone at home. We're going to have a real quality field. It's really, really good. Matt, Chris, and Chris, Murphy and Mason will be guiding you through the action tomorrow night on Sporty Stuff TV. They'll be giving you that lineup. And of course, the finals of week six. We know the identities of half of the field Jean Van Vade, Graham Usher, and Gary Stone. It's all about the G's so far, Fair but only one of them can get the W, and that plays at Champions Week. He'll be the ultimate G, I suppose, would be the question. We mentioned about this losing run from James Richardson. Just to put a bit more context towards that, the stats for Series 2, Series 2 that you are seeing 60. over the James past six weeks and the future coming weeks, the most legs lost in a row is 12 by Jack Vincent. I'll say it quick and slow. Game oh, it's ended. Four, James player. Richardson ends James the losing Richardson. run. He draws it level with the second worst losing run of this series, which was 11 by... Fifth leg, it's Andy to throw first. I'll say it quiet and... 
under me breath, but James Richardson ends that losing run on hey, 11. T1. He does it in style, really, the 101 finish. He's had plenty of opportunities along the way to break that unwanted run, but... 26. Not been very prolific on the outer ring. You sort of feel that 26 opening Nine, bid. 29. An attempt to try and break the throw is not going to be enough against Andy Jenkins. You feel like James needs to find a full house. 140. Thirty nine. Eighty one. Sixty. That sixty has just opened up a door of opportunity here for Richardson. A single one has severely derailed 40. the opening of that particular door. Eighty-six. Needs a treble here, you feel. 58, and he was 136. We might be giving Andy Jenkins six starts at this 136. 100 here would be job done, you feel, for Andy on this visit. Obstacle 96. That's James pretty much the best we'd really hope for to set up the double with three darts on the return. James Richardson back on 156 was a big ask that will not come in. So 60. Andy Jenkins and he to get his 40. first win of the campaign today. Tops is what he wants. Now along for double ten. 20. But it doesn't go, and Richardson gets another go. 96. 96 is what he wants to bring it back to 3 2. Went double 18 for double top, and so 56. Jenkins. 56. And his first win of the night to move himself on to six points alongside Cameron, alongside Hogan. Double ten is the target. Now up for double five. Ten. But the opportunity comes James and goes. And Richardson it. returns again. He comes back for tops. For the break. James Four, the three, two. And this James game Richardson. goes on. Jenkins has had his chances. He's had his opportunities to close this game out. To Sibling put himself James level with second and third in game the group. On. But Richardson keeps his contest alive. 83. Chances. Chances, what you said there. Because Andy Jenkins did the hard Eight work. He got himself five. down to a single double. He got himself down to tops. And then had two handfuls. Six darts to get that one wrapped up. 100. And wasn't able to find the winning double. And when you're in that situation, you, you do worry. You do think, was that my chance? Am I going to get another chance? Have I now give some hope to my opponent? Whenever you keep someone alive, 60. there's always that chance they can come back and bite you. We have seen many games where a player has taken a 3 0 lead and then it's completely flipped around and they've lost the match. You count down the lives, you count down the opportunities. Well, your opponent just slowly plays himself back into the game. Forty. And are we entering potentially tungsten turnaround territory? Because Richardson, six starts on one five eight. He's gonna need the six. Sixty. To send us to three three from a point where he was 3-0 down. 3-0 down, and we started looking at the record books hey, to see about a potential too. break of the record in terms James of the Ramon most legs lost, and he's found something. That is the sign of a quality player. And they can react. 
when they can produce hey, he too, and he in the darkest of circumstances. That moves Andy to a non-finish. And you just feel the frustration he's building here for Jenkins. You will no doubt want to get through to hey, the final, not just because of James requires 16. the extra pennies in the pocket and the chance for the £5,000, but being the local guy, he's want to put on a show for the audience we'll get down here tomorrow James night. James on the sick flag. James Richardson. Definitely, but he may be not be there. So, final leg decider in this one. Jenkins Seven from with one the one darts. Andy to three first. Game on. But Andy can just ignore what's happened before. He's got this kind of almost tunnel vision about him where whatever happens, happens. Just look at the next leg. 55. Well, he went 3-3 three, three in his last game, and then Paul Hogan kicked off with a maximum against him. He nearly returned that favour to James Richardson. No, Jenkins six. actually played extremely well in that last leg. He left a double after just 12 darts. He just never came back because Paul Hogan went out in 13. Can do that again in this one where James Richardson is oh, sat in the leg now. He will get a chance at that double. He will get more match darts. He's already missed six. 40. You can see he just wants this done with. He is fed up of looking at the back no, of James Richardson. I'm afraid now he thought he saw the back of James Richardson, but. Ruthless. 60. Came charging back in this match, but it looks as if it's Jenkins who's going to have the final word. One hundred and forty. One forty. Just gives Jenks a tap on the shoulder as he sets up here from 184. James Richardson is feeling this. He can sense the opportunity. Six. Of the best darts there from the players. What can James Richardson leave? 61. And he requires 62. Advantage Andy Jenkins. Should get another match dart. Double 16 is the 30. target, but it doesn't go. James, you require 112. Richardson, 112. That's a nice lie for the treble. Couldn't find it, and so Fifth Jenkins will get another go at double 32. 16. Sixteen. But it doesn't go, and can Richardson nick it at the James post? James required 56. Go and Ruthless completes the comeback from 3-0 down Richardson. to get the better of Andy Jenkins in a last leg decider. Jenkins, who mismatched darts for 4-0, mismatched darts in the decider, is beaten by Ruthless, who played to the whistle, played to the end, and managed to get the victory. He beats Jenkins 4-3 with a halfway point of the night. We're going to take a short break, Matthew. Edgar's going to join Chris Murphy up on the balcony for some half-time analysis. And when we return, it's Paul Hogan up against Josh Payne.
Welcome back. Well, it's that point of the evening when I'm joined by Matthew Edgar to discuss what's happened so far. Uh, we'll start with that previous match because it was a bit of a landmark moment for James Richardson, not only uh, ending that losing streak of legs, but also for the first time ever at the Super Series, winning from 3-0 down. When you think about the amount of games that James Richardson has played as well, it's an incredible stat. And it could be a couple of things. It could be maybe James Richardson just doesn't go 3-0 down very often, which wouldn't be a surprising factor for me. But to turn that one round in the way he did as well, Andy Jenkins, 10 missed match darts in that game. He had six in one leg and four in the other. He's not going to be happy with that outcome. Yeah, 12 darts missed in the, in the match, 10 for the match for Andy Jenkins. And that means he is the one that's off the pace at the moment in Group B. We'll take a look at that table. Jenkins bottom on four, three players on six, but Josh Payne at the top on eight points and one win away from qualification. Uh, you did suggest that he would be the one that would rise to the occasion tonight. It's proved to be the case so far. So I'm now going to ask you for your second pick of players to go through. This is where it starts getting tricky. I'd like to say Paul Hogan at this point, but Paul Hogan's going to be up against Josh Payne, who's trying to get the job done, and then he's only got one game left. So my eye then draws to James Richardson. Granted, he's lost 4-0 today, and he just won that scrappy encounter, turn it round from 3-0 down, but we've not seen the best from him at any point so far, and he's got to start producing at some point. He's just too good not to. Yeah, that leg difference so could certainly come into play. Right, let's move on then to this next match, and it is a meeting between Josh Payne and Paul Hogan. Uh, Payne, well, he felt the pain yesterday against Paul Hogan, who produced a, a stunning showing, really, to get the better of him, this 1-4-6, and then he went on to to win it with a 1-0-6. So 1-4-6 is that good. We're going to see it twice, Matt, but yeah. 106 as well in the end, a whitewash win. Does that give you a good feeling when you've beaten a player in that kind of style when you play them again so soon? Oh, of course it does, yeah. When you And the way he did it with the finishers as well, and it's okay beating someone, but when you beat someone convincingly, it's a completely different story. You're aware of that, your opponent's aware of that, and it just gives you good vibes when you're going back into that game again. It's like, let's do a bit more of this. And on the same aspect, if he comes in this and he takes out 100 plus finish again, Josh is going to think, why always me? Yeah, well, he can strengthen his chances, Paul Hogan with victory here. But if Josh Payne does get the victory, he will be the first man through from this group. Let's get the game on then, Matt. We'll head downstairs to rejoin Henry Deacon. Chris, thank you very much indeed. And this game has plenty of bearings on the group, as rightly mentioned by Merv, for this one getting underway. For Josh Payne, win and you're in. And that is the position that every single player at the start of their campaigns, and in Josh's case on Monday, was hoping to do. Missed out on qualification through Group A to Jan Van Veen. They're not going to make full advantage of the second opportunity to head hey, into the second half of the night burst. here at the Game Super on. Series. And we're still, to a certain extent, none the wiser as to who's going to take the free spot. 80. Both these players know what it's like to play in front of a crowd here at this venue. Paul Hogan played on opening night. Made it through to the semi-finals. Meanwhile, for Josh Payne, he finished one up in week 10, one but won his place through to Champions Week, courtesy of being the best one up in the 12 weeks because Scott Williams had to withdraw from the competition due to his PDC commitment. 86. And made it through to Champions Night, where he made it through to the semi-finals. So they all know what it's like to play in front of a big 60. crowd. In this venue, but it's Hogan who gets the better start of the two. But is it going to be for you, Matthew Edgar, Paul Hogan? 90. Getting victory number two, or is it going to be Josh Payne who makes it through? I think regardless of this result, I think Josh Payne's going to make it through. 170. It's just when does that come? Josh Payne's last game of the evening will be against Andy Jenkins, who... Has got to try and find a little bit of bounce back ability. I've 61. no doubt he's going to be absolutely gutted after 11. losing that last game 3 0 up and then missing 10 match darts. 
game, John, the first No miss darts Paul Hogan. for Paul Hogan, who gets that one wrapped up in 14. Second against Josh to throw first. One hundred. About the players that have played in front of a crowd and what they've done here. It's a different environment, isn't it, with the crowd in 140. here? One hundred and forty. It's not like a traditional sort of darts crowd. You do get that sort of noise and that ripple of sound and that applause, but it's not like a, a darts audience where they're up hey, on the table singing and dancing and waving the flags around. It's a unique environment, isn't it? It's quite close and intense. It's a best of order experience, most definitely. They do give the players real good bits of respect. And when it is rammed in here, you can feel the tension. And there's players who's Hands on the back of their neck who, uh, neck who played in big tournaments, played in big events, and even they say that the jitters are there because when the crowd's in, the stage that looks so big on Monday to Friday behind closed doors 100. suddenly vacuums. And it almost turns in from a big arena because of the behind closed doors element, almost to a circus tavern Six. type place where everything's so uptight and close. We we'll say the biggest thing that you get from a crowd is instant feedback 60. and reaction. They are the two bigger factors that you get from having a live audience that you don't get here. You might get feedback and reaction, but that's hours after the game. It's not 60. literally after the three darts that you or throw you or your opponents throw. Fifty. Joshua Corn hundred. So Hogan leads himself on fifty one, looking for a break of throw. Payne cannot save his throw on this occasion by pinning the one forty. So Hogan's gonna get two darts. One hundred. Should get two darts at least 51. to see the leg through. Double sixteen is intended target. And Game double sixteen is what he leg. finds to break oh, the Josh Hogan. Payne throw and open up a two nil lead. A win here for Hogan, bunches it up again. Third leg, it's Paul to throw first. Game on. It would mean that Josh Payne would have to wait to see if he can make it through. Chris Murphy asked me about what it's like when you get that win against somebody. I can tell you the sort of things that are going through Josh Payne's mind right now. They'll be along the lines of, will you Nine, just miss six. something? Because he didn't miss anything really in their game yesterday averaged 100 in a 4-0 victory the next thing you'll be thinking 60. is why don't you play like this against everybody else the mario Nine, balotelli logic six. why always me exactly that and some players wear that badge and they wear it quite hard josh payne is in that category of people that will be very aware that the level of performance against him has raised. He averaged 100 yesterday. He's averaging 98 today. 59. Or you've got 161. When you consider that he's running about the 91 for the day, which is good darts, may I 95. Add. But it's still an increased level of performance when it comes up against Josh. Now... Is that down to the fact that Nine, Josh might have a target six. on his back being the bookie's favourite to win this group? You sense that Josh Payne always has a target on his back when he plays in this competition. He's one of the biggest 30. names in it. Josh, Courtesy of what he's done in his career. Courtesy of the titles he's won. Courtesy of the reputation that he's forged for himself. And that a sign of frustration there from the maximum. The... 28-year-old from Ashford. 94. So Hogan returns a double 18 for a 3 nil lead. Hold a throw. Along for double nine. Thirty-two. That's a long way 60. low. That 
reminds me of earlier on in the night when Paul Hogan went for the double 14 and pulled it into the 11. Let's give Josh Payne an opportunity of the 60. He did this yesterday and bust it when he was on a 78 finish. He hit the treble Game's 20. On the third, no eh? mistake this Josh time. Payne. 20 and tops. And that is a breaker throw instantly retaliated. Well, like it's Josh to throw first. Game on. Also, the first leg Josh Payne has took off of Paul Hogan in Group B. So, scores are being settled here tonight. As the league table 135. is not settling. With half of the games already gone. 45. As I say, just another reminder of the situation in the league standings. A victory for Payne. We'll see him through on 10 points. Hogan wins. He's on 8. David Cameron up next against David Cameron. If Jenkins wins that, he gets put on to 6. 100. And sadly, if Payne loses another one, he may find himself caught beneath the landslide in Group B. Sixty. The champagne would have to be on ice. One hundred and forty. Well, if you recognise that your opponent has raised their level of performance against you, you just fight fire with fire, and that's what Josh Payne is doing in this leg. Raising his 60. levels. One hundred and forty, Joshua, one hundred and twelve. He's going to have to find a way around that if he wants to stay at the treble twenty bed. Yeah, there's not really much more options other than trying to force that through. The only real choice he's got there is treble fourteen for Bull on the ninety-two, 56. or try and find a way around well, that dart, which was the plan he tried to go with. The so Hogan's love affair Joshua with double 18 Warren, doesn't continue there. And so Payne will get the opportunity at 56 to level this game up at two apiece. He'll put him within two legs of progression. Double 10. 36. For you require 18. 14 chances and Joshua required what we were saying earlier Josh Payne was thinking can you just miss something I suppose with that you just gotta hang in there because misses are inevitable they are going to happen can't carry on the vein that Paul Hogan Game was you've just got to make sure that you are there to Josh strike Payne. when you get the opportunity which is what Josh has done now he has leveled up the game from 2-0 behind and I like sort of feel the way first. it's going, despite the fact that Josh hasn't quite fully accelerated, that he's doing just enough bits that are going to worry Paul Hogan. 80. And potentially put Josh Payne as the first player from this group through to Saturday's final and give us four out of our six players for tomorrow night. 47. One hundred and forty. One hundred and forty. Reminder coming up after this. We're going to see Andy Jenkins in action up against David Cameron. Now, if Payne 100. gets over the line in this one and Jenkins wins the next, Payne would be on 10. Then you'd have next three players on six points, but we're thinking a long way ahead of ourselves here. 140. Hogan here with the darts in the fifth. 
going to make an indent on this 181. 100. That's a big glass dart of the treble 20. Nine Z8. We require AZ1. Both players just thrown 12 darts in this leg to show the quality has been on show in this one. But is this the Josh chance that Josh Payne has been waiting for? The chance to put himself in the driver's seat of this game. It will be one dart at tops to take the lead. 36. For your required 25. And one opportunity come and gone already for Josh Payne. Will he get more? Nine. He will. He returns to the board for top to turn 40. this one around. He went 2 0 down. Paul Hogan running at nearly 100 average at that point. Josh Payne looking for the complete turnaround. Looking to take the lead for the first time in the game and put himself one away. Game's on the fifth leg. Josh Payne. And he is one leg away from completing this turnaround. Paul Hogan has had his opportunities. They have come and gone. Josh has taken Sick his. Leg, it's Josh to throw first. And he's one leg game away on. from booking his ticket in tomorrow night's final. With a game to spare. 100. He was the player for whom at this point he knew he was going to have the game advantage, which if you lose can be a disadvantage, if you win can be an advantage. It just depends on your result. One hundred. Sixty. Time is running out for Paul Hogan in this match. Fifty-nine. Going to need to produce something quick. Something like this. One hundred and ninety. Timing, class, quality from Paul Hogan. Finds his second maximum of the match. 2 0 in 56. that column to Paul Hogan. We were 121. The reaction to that 180 from Josh Payne is 56. Gives us the vibes that this game 57. could be going all the way, which will be the fourth match of the evening to go the distance. Three out of the five games we've seen so far have gone all the way, which Shouldn't surprise you when you look at the opening table oh, that we've dealt we with all players sat on four points. Four hundred and seventy-six. So for the requisite double Game to send us all the way once again. Hogan. And at this point, why aren't we surprised? Because that's been the tale of this group. Seven no one can be prized Paul apart. Throw first. And now this is a big leg in the context of it because if Paul Hogan wins. He moves himself onto eight points, tied level with Josh Payne. But if it is the maximum to gain success in this seventh and final leg, then he is the first man from Group B to send himself through to tomorrow night's finals, which you can watch from 10 o'clock tomorrow on Sporty Stuff TV. And the Moda Super Series YouTube channel, which if you are watching us from there, please do subscribe because on top of the live action, We'll have other content, including the game of the day, highlights, other behind-the-scenes bonus content Six. as well. So please do join us for that on the Moda Super Series YouTube channel. Subscribe, and of course, give us a follow on our social media channels. It is at MSS Darts. You can also get in contact with us on the Tungsten Tees. We'll talk more about that in the next game as Paul Hogan leaves himself on 2 for one after nine darts with the throw. We wonder what sort of Indent Josh Payne can Nine, put on it. Seven. Well, Paul Hogan certainly earned his money tonight, hasn't he? All his games have gone the distance. He lost his opening 1-4-3 to David Cameron. He beat Andy Jenkins 4-3.
That's when he opened with a 180. He went out in 13 darts in that last one. Won't be a 13 darter in this. 100. Well, you've got 100. Well, all things are pretty much level. Two trebles needed to a double. I'd be happy enough just to find one. Oh, that is fantastic darts from Paul Hogan. Leads a double after 15. Can Josh wrap up the 144? We cannot. So Paul Hogan 41. will get matched darts. We require 20. But it doesn't go. No score. Pain returns. Josh for 103. 103. A single one with the final dart of the last visit. Is that going to come back to Cotsim or can he find this ton plus out to send himself into tomorrow night's final? It doesn't go. And so Hogan back for double 10. 87. Or you require 20. Go and Hogan holds Payne's passage into tomorrow night's final. He moves on to eight points alongside his opponent by claiming a 4-3 last leg success. And so it makes things very, very interesting now. Two players at the top on eight points having played seven matches apiece. Coming up after this short break, Andy Jenkins up against David Cameron. A win for Jenks would mean players in third, fourth and fifth respectively would all be tied on six points.
where we promised you it would be close this evening. And with four games left to play, nothing is settled in Group B. In fact, four of the first six games have gone the distance, four, three real tight fights in this group, including that last one between Paul Hogan and Josh Payne. But it was Hogan who crucially won that last leg decider. Payne could have gone through if he'd have won that game, came back at Paul Hogan who led it 2-0, but eventually it was Crocodile Dundee who got over the line. And that means that the table now looks like this. Payne and Hogan tied on eight points in the top two spots, looking good right now. But David Cameron and James Richardson breathing down their necks on six. And Andy Jenkins, who is in action next, bottom of the pile on four at the moment. Uh, Jenkins is about to take on David Cameron. And defeat for Andy Jenkins in this one would result in elimination, but it could have been so much rosier for Rocky. Because in that previous match against James Richardson, he raced into a 3-0 lead, but missed six starts to win the match in the fifth leg, as you can see here. And then, as Richardson rallied, Andy Jenkins went on to miss a further four match starts in the last leg decider, allowing James Richardson to win from 3-0 down for what is the first time in his Super Series career. And that is a career that spans for more than 300 matches. So a real result for Richardson there as he managed to KO Rocky. But on brighter nose for Andy Jenkins, he did beat David Cameron when the pair met yesterday, a 4-3 win for the Pompey player in that one. So nobody through yet, but can will we see a player eliminated in this match? Let's find out. Back to Henry and Matt. Thanks, Murph. We've also been crunching through the numbers. There's still a conceivable scenario where every single player finishes on eight points in this group. For that to happen, Andy's got to get the better of David here. Then you've got to see James Richardson get the better of Paul Hogan. Jenkins get the better of Payne. And then hope in the final match of the evening, Cameron gets the better of Richardson. That would create a five-way tie. Inconceivable, but still fathomable at the minute. Well, it's what we wanted to see. Well, it's what I was certainly wanted to see, wasn't it? All the players tied on eight points. It just decided by legs. We have only had this situation, you say, once before where all players get four hey, points like on the Andy night. To throw first. If there's any Game group on. that you feel is going to be able to deliver that sort of outcome, it's going to be this one. Because like we said, there's nothing really to separate the hey, players. T5. It's literally unfolding before your eyes that exact story. One hundred. Ninety-five. Now, so far this evening for Andy Jenkins, we have seen him lose out 4-3 in a deciding leg to 60. Paul Hogan. Did exactly the same against James Richardson. So here's naught from two following the opening couple of games of his evening. I think there's two completely contrasting stories, though, between those two. The one against Paul Hogan, he left a double after 12 in the last leg. Wasn't able to get a shot at that because no, Paul Hogan seven. went out in 13. David, you've got 167. But it's that James Richardson one, that last one, that potentially could have a little bit of lag to it, could potentially have almost ruined the night, really, for... Andy Jenkins, he was 3-0 up. He should never two. have been in a position to have gone all the way to a last leg shootout. He missed six darts to prevent that even happening and then missed four darts in that last leg shootout. 59. Ten David, you match require darts. This is the first time we're able to see him since that point. 25. Now he decided to go. 73. And he was 105. Seven, 
57. David Maguire, 52. Top 57. Game show. An opening leg day. break for David Cameron. David Cameron, who would propel himself onto eight points with victory here. Second leg, it's David to throw first. Game And on. then it would make the task of James Richardson a lot harder, who played in our next match against Paul Hogan. 60. One hundred and forty. The time is not on the side of Andy Jenkins. We heard from Chris Murphy at the start. Just a reminder that if Andy Jenkins is not to win this game, if he loses to David Cameron, Aye, he will be the first three. player whose fate is decided. And that will be decided in the fact that he will not be able to qualify. So we'll be then be looking for three players out of the remaining four that will be left standing. It'd still be a tight race to the finish, so stick with us. Whether you're tuning in to us around the world, and if you are tuning in to us in the UK, it's past midnight, so welcome to the Midnight Darts Club. Tweet us at MSS Darts, wherever you're tuning in to us from. Ninety-two, and he required ninety-eight. Level things up at one apiece. Down for double 19. 78. David, you require 170. Chooses to split it and give David Cameron the option of the 170. We've seen this tactic employed earlier in the week by Graham Usher. That wasn't a very profitable one. I mean, he took on Gary Stone. He left Gary Stone the opportunity to have a shot at the 147. And he obliged. Andy Jenkins. The 147, just like Andy Jenkins obliging with the finish in that one, levelling up this game. Getting his throw back. I think it's Andy and keeping his hopes it. alive. Being able to be here tomorrow night. He has promised us he will be bringing quite a sizable crowd five. with him should he get through. Yeah, Rocky well, always brings the Blue Army with him on a Saturday night. Hey, what occasion it was last time he was here on a Saturday. That was the, I suppose we kind of called it Legends Week. It wasn't officially a, a, a Legends Week, but it, it panned out that way because of the players Nine, in the field. Seven. And it was packed. It was jumping. It was bouncing in here. And you could be a part of it every Saturday night as well. It's dartshop.tv for your free Nine, complimentary three. ticket to the occasion. Uh, tickets for every single finals night up until Champions Week are available to view on dartshop.tv. So, could be a pre-Christmas plan, possibly. Come down to the darts. Come and see us in Portsmouth. Or well, it could be something to tick off the bucket list at the beginning of 2023. 100. It's a unique experience, so why don't you come on down and join us? 100. Ton there for Jenkins. Leaves himself on 72 after 12. He won the previous leg in 13. He's beginning to go through the gears in a game that he knows he has to win 59. to keep himself in contention and he 72. in terms of progression. And so he goes down for double 16 Aim, to win it in 15. Day. And to turn Jenkins. this game around, Cameron won the opener. Jenkins has won the requisite two, and he leads 2-1. Four play against David to throw first. Hey, T5. Sort of felt that a performance was sort of brewing for Andy Jenkins. It was just bubbling under the surface. 34. And it is coming out at the time he needs it the most. Average climbing towards the 100 mark. One hundred and eighty. Been waiting a while for one of them. One hundred and forty. And continuing to climb towards the hundred mark. This 
is a performance from Andy Jenkins. 96. Timed to perfection. Fifty seven. David, you record one hundred and forty. Forty. And you record one hundred and seventy. Seventy. David, you require one hundred. After twelve darts leave exactly a hundred, but David Cameron by Having the advantage of throwing this one, we'll get the first poke at it. 60. He's unable Andy to do so. 100. So can Andy wrap up 100? He will get a dart to do so. Game and that the four is a play. lovely finish Andy there from Andy Jenkins. Jenkins. 20 tops, tops. And it looks like he's keeping his hopes alive of getting through to Saturday. Fifth leg, it's Andy to throw and first. It could be a game situation on. that after game seven, on day two, all five players are still in the mixing bowl. Incredible, 99. isn't it? That's a supersonic finish there from Andy Jenkins. And, well, just when you think one twist is going to happen, it turns the other way. 140. The purpose and the venom in that throw from Andy Jenkins. Technical wise, One so much better than yesterday. It's happened to be. David Cameron has raised his game. He's averaging nearly 42. 95. But yet he's only been afforded one dart of the double, of which he hit. Fifty-nine. That was kind of story in the game against Josh Payne, where it's just restricted to opportunities, 70. very minute David opportunities. But maybe this is the first time he can see a little bit of an opening arise. One, two, two. Triple eighteen. Left no dart in the bullseye. Now he's just got to hope that Andy Jenkins cannot convert the one fifty. Ninety. Which would see him win the game in style and to keep his hopes of, uh, of progression, should I say, alive. 134. Not just hopes Maybe of his progression, 32. but the hopes of everyone ending on eight points would still be alive. This would be one game of the results the that needs to go that David way. Cameron. But David Cameron, two darts at the double, two darts hit. Sick like it's David to throw there, Andy Jenkins has game been... On. Good on the outer ring here. He's only had four darts to the double and hit three of them. Could technically say, is it four? Because he had that double 26. double attempt on the 100 out, which he used to take a 3 1 lead. This is how you punish a 26. All the pressure in the world now on David Cameron. 45. He is in trouble. Can Rocky land the big haymaker? Big last start. It's just kept that gap between the players in this leg. 40. And now Rocky looking to make a move. 96. He's himself on the fish. 140. And he recorded 170. Rocky is throwing big blows. And they are all landing. You sort of feel nothing less than a max here for David Cameron. He is in trouble. No, 43. The chance of all players being on eight points. The chance of everyone 63. still being alive and after seven games 65. on day two. Hangs in these 65 points. 
45. He is going to return Jenkins for the double 10. But it's not going to feel as comfortable now. 138 and, and so, about 20. The 4-2 victory to keep his hopes alive. Up for double five. He missed 10 match starts in the previous match. David, you require 52. And a moment of conjecture there is the final dart will not count. According to the referee, he overstepped the line. 14. And another fine line for David and Cameron because that dart five. goes the other way into the double one. And so Jenkins returns for a final opportunity to try and seal the match. Double two. Up for the madhouse. Game and he gets the game the one. And he keeps Andy his hopes Jenkins. of progression alive. Andy Jenkins gets the better of David Cameron by four legs to two. So Andy Jenkins keeps his hopes alive. We're going to take a short break. Upon our return, it's James Richardson up against Paul Hogan. Do join us for that. Welcome back. Wow, what an evening it is. We did think it would be close, but three games left to go and still nothing solved in Group B. And Rocky is off the ropes and back in contention. That after Andy Jenkins KO'd Cameron in that previous match. A 4-2 success for the Pompey player who is hoping to perform in front of a home crowd tomorrow evening after uh, defeats in his earlier two matches. He bounces back. Averages 91 and wins 4-2. Now let's have a look at exactly how close it is. Here is the Group B table. Josh Payne and Paul Hogan both on eight points. Everybody else on six. 
uh, Hogan is in action next against James Richardson and victory for Hogan would mean he would be the first man through from this group. Uh, but defeat, and he would face an anxious wait because this is his last outing of the evening. So very much all to play for. And you can see the inferior leg difference for James Richardson there. That suggests that he probably needs a win. If he gets it, we still have that scenario where every single player could end up on the same amount of points at the end of the evening. So uh, we'll dig deeper into that if that result does happen. But they are about to play, just warming up behind me now. Richardson um, in this position because of that comeback win against Andy Jenkins earlier on. It was sparked with this 101 checkout. A finish he knows all about because Paul Hogan himself took out the self-same shot against Richardson yesterday in a 4-2 win for Crocodile Dundee. Uh, so, all to play for on this quite remarkable night in this incredible group. But at the end of this match, we could have a player through or we could still be none the wiser. Let's see which way it goes with Henry Deacon and Matthew Edgar. The scribbles on the abacus paper that we have here in the commentary box are continuing to be written down. The script still to be written very much so in this group. We might be a step closer to finding out. Or we could find ourselves just as stumped as we were before. Every single time, Matthew Edgar, in this group, we think we know the answers. Okay, first thing is James to throw There first. seems to be another question Game that pops on. up. There's a good expression, weren't they, that every time you think they know the answers, they change the question. And that's what's happening here, just when we think One we've worked it out. 180. Something bizarre happens, like those 10 missed starts at a double for the match. And James Richardson turning it round from 100. being 3 0 down. But one thing I said with Chris Murphy was although we haven't seen James Richardson perform yet, he lost 4 0 in his opening game and then Eight, he won three. that really scrappy one with Andy Jenkins. I expect that at some point he is going to come to life. He's too good of a player to not start producing to a level that we'd expect to see from James Richardson, the ADC European champion. 43. If he produces that in this game, we are still on course for the five-way eight-point tied league table. Of which the statisticians are going One through every conceivable, conceivable scenario. So, Hogan, 161. Is it going to be done now? So, Richardson back on 95 for an opening leg hold. 59. James Reguine, 95. So, 95 for a 1 0 lead. Fifty-five. Probably record 102. He's himself on top. See if Hogan cannot take out the 102. Got to get a dart at double 16. 86. This goes wide on the inside James wire. 40. Thirty. Oh, you require sixteen. Is that an opportunity come and gone? Game shot on the first. It's certainly leg. gone. Paul Hogan. You'd expect more opportunities to arise, but when you open the leg with a maximum like James Richardson, you do not expect to see your throw Second get leg broken. Second to throw first. Paul Hogan would sixty. Put himself through with. Victory here in this one. He would be the first name to have their fate confirmed. First man with the gold Fifth star eight. and the Q next to their name. They would join Jean Van Veen, Gary Stone, and Graham Usher into tomorrow night's finals, which you can tune into from 10 p.m. on Sporty Stuff TV. And the Moda Super Series YouTube channel, Chris Mason, will be in the chair in this particular commentary box alongside 
Matthew Echo and Chris Murphy will be up in, I suppose we'll call it the, the gods up on the balcony. 140. And do get in touch with us, of course, as well, at MSS Darts on Twitter. And uh, plenty of famous faces tweeted. And Richard Ashdown tweeting. Scott Mitchell, of course, part of our, very much a part of our commentary team here at the Super Series. Exciting evening here at the MSS Darts. 60. Last game. You know, talk about the, the last game in the course. It's all happening here at the Super Series. It definitely is all happening at the Super Series. And look forward to having Scott Fair back as part of our commentary team very soon indeed. Forty-three. Have you ever experienced a group like this before? That eight games into the second day, that we've still not got a single player decided of their fate. We've had tight group Bs, but 90. I can't. Well, we I can't think 90. of this. No, absolutely not. It's. If, if I asked you three players to go through, by now you'd probably be able to Games name two. On the second leg. You may be able to Paul name Hogan. one in a couple of legs time because Paul Hogan's opened up a 2-0 lead. Back the break of the first leg up with a hold in the second, courtesy of that 98. Well, games to throw first. Game but you, you, you still get the sense you're none the wiser to who's going through. If Richardson wins this, then just put a five-sided coin in the middle, toss it, and see which side... Heads and tails land. 100. Well, you've got Josh Payne and Andy Jenkins in the next game. That's their last game of the evening. Andy Jenkins wins that one. He will move up. One join Josh Payne. Oh, it's all, getting, it's all getting a bit messy. Nothing is settled at this point. 85. Paul Hogan. He's halfway to settling one point, which is his own personal qualification. He'd be playing number four through to 100. tomorrow night's final. One hundred. Since this was a big visit for Richardson, if Hogan poised back on two sixteen, a treble's visit would have changed the complexion of the leg. One hundred and five. Now one hundred five leaves him on ninety six. Hogan trying to set it up as handily as possible, but that treble in that visit means 60. that Richardson's got a two darter to go for James on the ninety six. 96. Treble twenty for double eighteen, which ironically is Hogan's favourite double. Seventy six left. Stayed there, went for the traditional route of 42. Travel 20 for double eight. I suppose for the modern way where players go double 18 tops now on that particular finish. But he's going to return for 54 to pull a leg back. 54. That was a slip. So it means only one dart at top. And it doesn't go. It drags just below. 16. Golden opportunity for Hogan. To attain the double break. Has to move across to his wide. No and he drags it just below into the 16. James required 20. Games on the third. The last time we saw James, James Richardson, Richardson, James Richardson was able to turn around a 3 0 deficit to Andy Jenkins. In order to come back and win 4 3. Four blankets, pull to throw this first. is not as Game big on. of a mountain. He's only two down in this one. He's actually only one down after wrapping up that last leg. One hundred and eight. But finds himself in a world of trouble right from the get go in leg four as Hogan kicks off Max. 121. And is following up. 140. 180, 140 with the darts to put yourself within a leg of qualification. This is 
quality stuff from Paul 100. Hogan. One hundred. Did have a couple of chances 45. in that last leg to have been three nil ahead. These sort of low tum shots. This is a two trouble combination. But been taking out these tumbler shots for fun. Is the one three six within reach? You will need two trebles if it is going to be. There is one. Oh, it's on. And he just comes inside. James Richardson. There is no master out in steel tip darts, so one eighty cannot go. If he does hit a 180, he would have actually bust the shot. 100. We've seen we that recently eight. with Damon Hetter in the European Tour. Game Gibraltar. On the four flag. But Paul Hogan. Paul Hogan gets over the line this time, gets his third leg on the board. He is one leg away Seems from like booking James his ticket Game on. into Saturday night's final, where he will get the opportunity to play for £5,000. Hogan is on the hill. 42. And that 42 start for Richardson with the darts has presented the opportunity for Crocodile Dundee. One To sink his teeth into the final. One hundred. He's hoping to take a bigger bite out of this leg. And the 45. Just keeping pace with James at the moment. Eighty four. Big last start. And trebleless visit there, especially after losing the line, would have put him in serious trouble. 137. There's the bite. Sizable bite. Sizable chunk of the leg. 123. 123 to leave him on 152. 81. James, you've well, made as many inroads there, Hoagie, as he would have liked. So Richardson 152 to keep his hopes in this game alive. Nine, Game over if he loses this match, but it makes life incredibly difficult. Fifty-eight. James should require fifty-six. Takes care of the big number this time. A long way off the tops. 36 is all that 80. all she wrote for James Richardson in this one tops 40 another chance James for Richardson 20 worrying times for Richardson he's already lost a game 4 nil today to Josh Payne he's a long way off that that's double 7 14 left Six. He's to lose this one for one. But we require 40. In a tight group like this, that could be the end of James Richardson. Game show. Hogan heads through Paul to Hogan. tomorrow night's finals. He beats James Richardson by four legs to one. He is the first player to book his passage through to finals night tomorrow evening. And as he departed the stage, you could see that little celebration from the man from Basingstoke, who beats Richardson by four legs to one. Just two more games to go in this Group B. It's Josh Payne against Andy Jenkins up next.
This is the Lotus Super Series. One hundred and eighty. And it is certainly the place to come for darting drama, isn't it? The Motors Super Series. Well, what tungsten tension we're experiencing tonight. And if you want to be here tomorrow night, tickets are available absolutely free via dartshop.tv. Get yourself here to Portsmouth to watch the action unfold on finals night. And we now know one man who will be there from this group. It is Paul Hogan after he won the previous match before the break there, beating James Richardson. Uh, we'll have a quick look at the stats from that one. Uh, we see Hogan winning 4-1, 98 checkout, 40% on the doubles for Hogan in that one. And he can now breathe easy. He can go home. That's his last game of the night. A sigh of relief for him. He goes through a disappointing defeat for James Richardson that leaves him stranded at the foot of the Group B table. So let's have a look at that and see... How the land lies for the rest of the field. Josh Payne still in a decent position on eight points. David Cameron, Andy Jenkins and James Richardson on six. But Richardson has that horrible leg difference. Minus eight after a couple of heavy defeats. Uh, the next match is Josh Payne against Andy Jenkins. Uh, Jenkins still fighting because he beat David Cameron in his previous match. 100 finish, tops, tops to complete the combo. And he... Still in with a shout of qualifying. Josh Payne would qualify with a victory here. He did beat Andy Jenkins yesterday. So victory for him puts him through and Jenkins out. But a win for Jenkins keeps things very interesting. Uh, he would still have to wait for the final match unless he wins 4-0, at which point he would be through and would put Josh Payne in peril. Hope that makes sense. But Matthew Edgar and Henry Deacon are on hand to elaborate. Yeah, it's one of those nights where if you make it up, they'll probably lock you up. And yeah, we've been scrambling our brains over the league table scenario. And for Josh Payne, winning you in. That's the simplest scenario. And that is what he's got to think. Because what he doesn't want to do in about 10, 15 minutes time is be sat in that practice room, twiddling your thumbs, biting your fingers, wondering, will I, won't I? Well, for Andy Jenkins, if he wants to keep this in his own hands, the only score he can have is a 4-0. Anything but a 4-0 win for Andy Jenkins, and it is no longer within his hey, hands. He goes Josh to throw first. Game on. It make things difficult. Remember, Cameron and Richardson after this. If Payne wins this, it will be a straight shootout between the two to get through to the next stage. 100. Jenkins wins this one, he would have to wait for the result of that. However, if he wins this 4-0, he'll go above Josh Payne, so Josh Payne becomes the player who is sat waiting on that last result. So Jenkins can keep this in his own hands with a 4-0 victory. Exactly that. 42. So that's the first thing we're going to watch for. We're looking for a Jenkins 4-0, so the first leg... If Josh Payne is to take one, that will remove this 97. from Andy Jenkins. It doesn't mean he cannot qualify. It just means that he will then be looking for favours somewhere within the field. 100. I think that's the easiest thing to do, isn't it? Look at all the options and we'll just take them out one by one and see what's 100. left. 100. Luckily, there's no... Yellow card, fair play, group decision award. 59. 60. 140, I need to 144. 
This is not the end of the leg that Andy Jenkins would have been hoping for. Josh Payne 40. hitting that 140 to leave Josh him on a two data. 60. So this could be the shot that takes it out of Andy's own hands. Game that confirms the that the 4-0 cannot Payne. happen. So as far as Josh Payne is concerned, Andy Jenkins is now out of his reach. Second leg is Andy to throw first. Eighty. That is Josh through. Only needed the solitary leg. He's through. One hundred and forty. So that is five of our six players confirmed. Eighty four. Indeed it is. So you know where I'm going with this, Matt, don't you? The man, the master of predictions, who's going to get place six? 134. I'm going to go with my original three players I put down hey, at the start too. of the day, which I wrote right here in pen, so we didn't forget them. And I'm going to go and stick with David Cameron. 40. Who plays James Richardson in the final game Fifth of the group? D8. And I'll also give you the answer to the Tungton teaser in just a second as well. Forty-four. Twenty-five. He got the second one right as well as he went with Paul Hogan highest out against James Richardson, which was the last game. James Richardson only winning one leg. That 59. was on double ten. Paul Hogan taking out in ninety-eight. So you got fifty percent. I'll take that. It's better than the usual returns. Twenty-six. Joshua require eighty-four. Want to let the ball, but it strays the other side into the treble eleven. So it presents Jenkins with an opportunity on the one four six. Is this for a hold of throw? Sixty eight and one hundred and forty six. Stay there for the double thirteen. So Payne returns a double eight to double his lead. Now that's awkward. As you can see, he's been shimming no up and score. down and along the off key, looking to find 65. a light to find the doubles bed. He couldn't. Tops two at it. 40. Joshua requires 16. Game show on the second leg. Josh Payne. I think the safest word to say right now to describe the emotion of Andy Jenkins is frustrated. Third against Josh to throw first. Game on. Ninety three. One hundred and seventy four. One hundred and almost retaliated now with a maximum visit of his own. If David Cameron does go through, we have got that scenario. Nine, where the six players that are making up finals night, five of them have been here all week. Mm -hmm. Does that then? a little bit of evidence on the Fair fact that it's more beneficial to play the full week than to try and come in for one of these two-day groups. 42. I, I think it's one that swings and roundabouts. I know that probably sounds like a cop-out answer. 
But we saw last week the two players that came through Group A into this group failed to go through. I just think, especially in Group B, because hey, fine large players have had to dealt with disappointment of narrowly missing out on the automatic qualification, is how you bounce back. Bounce back ability has been something Josh Payne has done well. 90. And he recorded today. It's why he's put himself in the position where he is through. So Jenkins 105. Double 16. Game shot in the third leg. To Andy bring it Jenkins. back on throw to get the break back. And it's now 2 1 to Payne. Could be one for our and resident stats first. gurus to help us out with for future reference. What the numbers are on the people that take part in Group A qualifying compared to the people that come in and just join on a B or a C. I bet you become their. I bet you become their favourite employee by giving them extra work. Fifty-four. So right, you've got a couple of weeks off now, aren't you, Henry? You could work that one out for us. Ninety-six. That's a lot 80. of number crunching. <laughs> You love it. I remember actually you were you off for a week and you decided to send in a World Cup suggestion of everyone who's played in the Super <laughs> Series related to every hey, nation. And I'm too. like, do you not have a day off? I've got no life. Even on my, even on my day off, I somehow find myself involved with darts. 99 and he recorded 145. But we love it. 21. Payne 78 there for 3 1 to reconstrue the break. Two 12s. Now along for double six. Game shot. And the there it play. is for 3 1 Josh for Josh Payne. Payne. Putting a world of pain upon Andy Jenkins here. Fifth leg is Josh to throw first. Game on. And we set up the scenario where Cameron versus Richardson would be a straight shootout. 96. Ninety six. David Cameron in that game would get the advantage of throw. Something that came to the advantage 100. yesterday when James Richardson won that game because he won that by the tightest of margins. It was 4-3 to James Richardson. David Cameron missed a match dart in that game. 20% on his doubles, David Cameron, in that one. And that was when he was going through that run of missing doubles and losing matches in a much better place now. James Richardson, on the other hand. Been on the back of a 4 0 defeat to Josh Payne today. He lost his last game 96. to Paul Hogan. So, by contrast, you've got to make David Cameron the favourite to win that game. Bookies don't. Bookies are letting you take your pick, pointing them up at the same price. 46. Josh Reguire, 86. Double 16. Now double 8 for the match for Josh Payne. 70. He is going to return with Jenkins back on 2-2-6. 100. Josh Reguire, 16. No score. And he recorded 126. More missed doubles from Josh. He's had 16 darts. A double in this game. Converted three. 58. 
Josh requires 16. Three more darts to wrap up this game. Game and shot that and completes Josh, Josh Payne's, Payne's Payne. campaign in Group B. And that is the end of the group for Andy Jenkins. And Andy Jenkins, the end of the week, because he is not going through to Saturday's final. Josh Payne is. He is the fifth player confirmed. We have one spot left available. And we have one game left available in pretty much a winner-takes-all clash between David Cameron and James Richardson. It's been here at the Modus Super Series and it is pain for Andy Jenkins, but joy for Josh after Josh Payne got the better of Rocky to join Paul Hogan in qualifying for finals night from this group. It was a final fling for Andy Jenkins, couldn't turn things around. Josh Payne winning the match 4-1 and going through from Group B. Uh, we'll take a look at the table. There is one more score to settle in this group. Uh, Payne, top of it, through with Paul Hogan on that magic 10 points. Jenkins, despite getting six, uh, cannot go through because the last match, of course, is David Cameron against James Richardson. And for the first time this evening, ladies and gentlemen, it is pretty simple. It is a straight shootout between the pair of them. Whoever wins it will take that final spot and complete our six at finals night. Now, when they met yesterday, it was Cameron who got the better of Richardson. Uh, a 108 checkout during that match. Apologies. It was Richardson who got the better of Cameron. Let's get that right. He hit a 180, didn't he, in the last leg to leave 21 and went 13 double four to get the win. He had the throw in that one. Uh, Cameron has a throw tonight, but it is 
all or nothing, as I said, the winner takes it all. The first time that it's been that clear all evening. So who will join Josh Payne and Paul Hogan in advancing to finals night on Saturday here at the Super Series? Let's find out, shall we? This one should be pretty easy to explain. Henry Deacon and Matthew Edgar. Thank you, Murph. Well, basically knockout darts from here on in for these two. This is a position they'll both like to be in, actually, after the way this group has gone to be, have your fate in your own hands of just simply a qualifying match. The way this group has gone, both of these would have been more than happy with this scenario. It's a scenario that two of them come into in quite contrasting form. James Richardson really struggling for form, to be fair today, and... Probably really struggling to perform in this group, but he has this opportunity. And what has happened in the past could become Dave, irrelevant David if for the throw next first. 10 minutes he can find Game his best. On. Five, the eight. And so we will confirm our final finalist from this match. Cameron, who's been here since first being on 25. Monday morning. Richardson, who entered the fray first thing last night. And how different things could have been, because Cameron actually had match darts to win the game yesterday. 59. So could have put himself already through by now. Still in his own hands, hey, and that's all five. you can ever really ask for. Have the situation in your hands he hasn't started this one well no trouble in the first six starts got him on 384 43 still unable to find a treble james richardson 291 60 grimaces at the board does have a lead of 110 points here in this one to the front nine. Nine. The so situation in this leg as we get the score back on the screen. Cameron two four four. Richardson two three one. One hundred. That ton means that it's going to be ruthless who's going to be first to finish the reigning ADC European champion up against David Cameron who's had success in the CDC tour. One hundred. James Rick, one hundred and thirty one. Seventy-five. David Rock one hundred and forty-four. Well, within this game, David Cameron throwing first. He will throw first in the last leg if it goes that far, which means at some point James Richardson would have to break the throw. You might as well get it out of the way nice and early and do it in the opening leg. Hey, he's going to do that. He needs to take out this fifty-six. Thirty-six. David you requires 62. sixty-two. The lowest shot on the board that still could become a three data. It will. Tops. Twenty-two. Extra light for James Richardson. Game he has ground himself James into a position Richardson. where he has an opportunity to qualify through for Saturday night's final. That is where he'll Second be if he can James get three more first. legs Game on the on. board. He is ground, he has fought, he has dug deep at times. If he can just find for five minutes the real James Richardson, he could book his place in that lineup and take the last spot. But David Cameron is not going to lay down and let that happen back to back 180 we've got two chances at the nine data james richardson won't be getting it over to you david cameron can you keep the nine data alive no is the answer and five days for david cameron kind of boils nine, down to five six. minutes doesn't it and it's amazing how this marathon competition format can suddenly turn into a sprint right at the end 
125. Remember, he was in the box seat in Group A overnight, going into the final day's action. He lost out to Jean Van Veen. That's a second James max of 96. the leg for Cameron. It piles the pressure on this 96. Double 18 for a 2-0 lead for James Richardson. 70. Goes inside, and so Cameron cuts the off. A double max leg has the opportunity to break back. In 11 darts, tops. 25. Drags just underneath. Richardson, James, double nine 18. for 2 nil. This will be one of those shots that make David Cameron feel a little bit James sick. On the second leg. Not James only Richardson. because he hit the two 180s, not only because he missed opportunities to break the throw back, but because James Richardson David wrapped that up with third. the last dart in hand that hurts for three reasons there for david cameron 96 and he react again he reacted to his throw being broken with the back to, well the two 180s 57 in that second leg nothing feels assured at the moment, even though James Richardson One, is halfway to victory, David Cameron puts in his third maximum of this match. Four between the two. One hundred. He had three in his opening game against Paul Hogan. Two against Andy Jenkins. So, hey, he won. Not bad at filling it up, is he? And he's doing it in the game that matters the most this week. But this could be another Max of Richardson. He needed it to leave a finish. And so Cameron, six darts and one four four to bring the gap back to 2-1. Leaves it very handy. Leaves and sell tops after 12. What a leg to put in when he knew he was right under it. Still right under it. 100. David, you require 40. Only for 2 1. But it's still a huge moment. Double 16. 8. Doesn't go. And if Richardson James can get this 1 2 1, he'll have the chance to foe for the match and foe for his chance to go through. But it ain't going to go. So Cameron back. For double 16. Hey, when we talk Maybe about the last leg 32. where James Richardson took it out with the last dart, this is the total Game opposite. When you miss it with leg. the first dart, David because it Cameron. gives you that extra processing time. You don't have to think, is he going to get it with a last dart? Do I have to watch for two? How long do I have to wait? There is no wait well, time. He messed it up first. on the first visit, on the first dart, and it's a total flip around in terms of how the players feel at that moment. That's when James 38. Richardson... Feels a bit sick because he hasn't kept the opportunity alive. Killed the opportunity off in dart number one. And David Cameron just steps up and polishes it off. 42. Keeps this straight shootout alive. Whilst we have a very quick interval, a, a, a reminder about the answer to the tungsten teaser. 60. On this day in 2007, two players hit nine darters at the PDC German Championship. The answer... Raymond Van Barneveld and Jason Clark. 140. The final tungsten teaser of the week. Matt, may I just say, while you get the opportunity, it's been an absolute pleasure to work alongside you once again and to everyone working behind the scenes as well. It's been an absolute honour. I'm sure you'll be back in the next couple of weeks. Just can't stay away. You'll be knocking on the door, trying to get in. One hundred and seventy-seven. And thanks to everyone who's tuned in at home. Sixty. Maybe to record one hundred and forty-two. This will be heading home. Cameron one four two to turn the screw and to make it two two. 60. Somehow didn't find a way into the treble there. 
60. Maybe you require 82. Tops. Game shot. Had the luxury of time, but a nice David 15 Cameron. dart break of throw for David Cameron. And so the final place into the finals of week six goes down for to a best of three. To throw first. Game on. I think it'd be the most fitting way to end this group by this match going three all. 58. Coming down and getting a couple of missed doubles for the match. If this was a script, this was a soap opera, that is how it's going 100. to end. 100. Bit like WWE. Yeah, I might go on there. 99. Forty-three. Eighty. Since this visit was a huge one for Richardson, he may be finding a huge 140. visit. One forty. One forty. Piles the pressure on Cameron here with the dart to conjured his way back into the game at 2 2. 60. Just a gripping scenario, isn't it? It's just sort of staring through the screens. 100. He's very finely balanced. They are separated by the finest of margins. 41. James, you require 118. That shot from David Cameron has left him in no finish. He cannot take out the 1-6-3. So James Richardson will get an opportunity to get that breaker throw back on the board. 81. But this time, James, he will be 30. one leg away. On Saturday's final. Game shot on the fifth leg. James and Richardson. he is exactly that. And he has the throw. He has the dart. So is James to throw first. To send himself into tomorrow night's final. When he took on David Cameron in his first Fish match of the week. Yesterday evening at 10 o'clock. This is where he wanted to be. On the cusp of the final. He could complete the finals night field, which, as things stand, sees Jean Van Veen, Gary Stone, Graham Usher, Paul Hogan, Josh Payne, and question mark. Remember, we began the night. 59. All five players tied on four points. Up until game eight. There was still a chance every single player could have ended level on points. 58. It has been a group that has twist and turned and has been tight from the first to last dart. 60. The barest of margins has separated them. 50. We're about to see the final deciding on decision day. 45. One hundred. You can understand the tension in this leg. Both players 95. know the significance of it. Fifty six. And Richardson's left himself on 168. And so Cameron now has six darts in his hand to take us 
to a Third deciding leg nine. to end this group. How it started, a game between Richardson and Cameron going the distance. Fifty-eight. David, you require 164. Treble 18. Doesn't go. So Richardson gets his opportunity. James, you require 110. His chance to send himself into tomorrow night's final. Ninety-three. David, you require 40. Better be he went for the bullseye there. So Cameron double ten. Twenty. Doesn't go. And so James Richardson. James, you require seventeen. He's gonna get two darts at double. No. He's score. not going to get two darts at double. David, you require twenty. He's bust the score. And Cameron comes back. Game shot on the sixth To leg. send us all the way. David Cameron. What an incredible end to that leg, which sends us to the last leg. And this Seven group from ends final leg, it's David to how it first. began. Game David on. Cameron against James Richardson going to a seventh and deciding leg. This one leg of 501 will determine the final spot. 60. The sixth and final spot into the sixth weekly finals night of Series 2. Cameron kicks off 60. 96. Richardson finds a treble. Every single one of them will feel like a nugget of gold in this scenario. 60. And it is advantage Richardson in the decider. 140. 140 on the back of a 96 to start. Has wrestled the darts truly from the grasp of David Cameron. Unless he can find a max here. 140. 95. Leaves himself on the fish. One hundred. James you require one hundred and seventy. Can Ruthless do it in style? He cannot do it with the fish. And so Cameron's going to return Eighty for one four one to send himself into tomorrow night's final. Doesn't go. One hundred and twenty-five. James, you require eighty-six. Leaves himself from double eight. Leaves himself handy. Double seven for Richardson. Game shot. And James and Richardson match. will James complete Richardson. the week six finals field. He gets a better of David Cameron four three in a deciding leg, just like he did in the meeting between the pair yesterday. James Richardson with an 81.3 average. Cameron had three maxes in the match. Three from 12 on the doubles for him. Richardson managing to take advantage of his opportunities. Four from 12. And so Richardson will join Hogan and Payne from Group B into tomorrow night's finals here at the Modus Super Series. So it's Ruthless who wins through. Let's get some analysis up on the balcony. Matthew Edgar is with Chris Murphy. Yeah, let's get some analysis because that was darting drama to the death. But it was a really bizarre way to end the evening. In that penultimate leg there, James Richardson attempting the bullseye with the second dart on 110. Have you ever seen anything like it? I haven't, and I'm sure I won't see it again. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I literally came up here and I looked at you and my jaw was down. I couldn't believe what was going on. It was... It's not like he had the throw in the last leg. If he had the throw in the last leg, you could say, okay, he's having a bit of a punt on this. But 
he backed himself into a bit of a corner there where he had to break the throw in the last leg. It came down to one dart at the double and he kind of made it more trickier for himself than it really probably should have been. Yeah, he did. He then busts the remaining 17 by hitting a treble 14. But all's well that ends well for James Richardson. We can take a look at the final Group B table and see that it is Richardson going through in that third place along with the two players that made it to 10, Josh Payne and Paul Hogan. David Cameron and Andy Jenkins crashing out. Uh, I guess you would say Cameron will probably feel the most unfortunate of that pair. Yeah, he had it in his own hands, really, didn't he? He had the throw, it was 3-3, three, three, and he opened with two troubleless visits. So, again, you can say it was kind of his own undoing at the end of things. But one thing we can say about this group is it has been pure entertainment from start to finish. And until the very, very last leg and the very, very last dart, we didn't know which way this group was going. We know which way it's gone now. It took a long old time as Matt just said but let's get confirmation of those groups for finals night then Saturday 10 p.m. live on Sporty Stuff TV and of course the Modus Super Series YouTube channel and here are the group brackets so a change in format for Saturdays those regular viewers will know that but it is two round robin groups featuring three players uh, group one the group A winner Jan van Veen, Graham Usher and Paul Hogan tough group two Gary Stone, James Richards and Josh Payne tough yeah, I think Group 1's the one you don't really want to be a part of. I think that's the stronger group of the two. I think if we look at Group 2, we're looking at James Richardson now. We're putting a load of question marks around him. His performance hasn't been there the last couple of days. Now, essentially, that's irrelevant now. Groups, uh, group B and Group C are completely done. This is all about finals night when we get into those little mini groups and knockout darts. So we can see him raise it. We've seen him do some ridiculous things before in the Super Series, but we haven't seen it yet this week. So eyes will be on him, I think, in Group 2. Right, one last question for you then before we close. What's been a thrilling night of action here? Who wins it? Who takes a £5,000 and makes it through to Champions Week? At the moment, I'm leading towards Gary Stone. OK, you've got the answer from Edgar. He's been pretty good this week, to be fair. Uh, that gets underway Saturday night, 10pm. As I said, the Modus Super Series YouTube channel, as always, and Sporty Stuff TV. But for tonight, well, all that's left to say is thanks for joining us for what has been one of the most exhilarating evenings we've ever had at the Modus Super Series. Let's do it all again tomorrow.